right? I think you can start. Okay, so uh, welcome to Wednesday's edition of the Jetscape Summer School 2023. Um, today's focus is going to be on hydrodynamics and some, uh, some hands-on exercises uh, related to Jetscape. And our first speaker is going to be Mayak Singh, who's going to be giving us an introduction to hydrodynamics. Take it away, Mayak. Um, thank you, Mike. And you can see my screen, right? Yes. Oh, thanks. So I, I want to begin by thanking the organizers uh, for uh, giving, inviting me and giving the opportunity to, uh, to present a talk on the collective dynamics of, of uh, QGP. Uh, so uh, before we begin, uh, please use uh, this Slack channel for the entirety of today's session uh, for this talk and the, uh, and the next uh, hands-on session. All right, so we are trying to study QCD matter at uh, high temperatures and densities. And that's a very interesting area, uh, but also very challenging. So uh, in that regime, especially the collective behavior, uh, you can't really do perturbative uh, analysis, which is typically used in other field theories. We have one initial method, that's the lattice QCD. But lattice QCD does, uh, is, is mostly uh, equilibrium stuff. And if you want to study the dynamics of a uh, outside equilibrium, uh, then, then you're severely limited. Uh, that, that's not to say that lattice QCD is not helpful. It's, it's very, uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's an ab initio calculation which informs uh, anything else we do in, in that, that area of the uh, QCD phase space. But uh, uh, it, direct comparison between first, um, first principles calculation and experiments is, is hard. So to, uh, to access that region of, of, the, Q, of, of the QCD phase diagram, we do heavy end collisions in these facilities at RIC and that's uh, LHC, where we collide the nuclei at really high uh, ultra-relativistic speeds and essentially uh, create that uh, very high temperatures and densities. In, in these temperatures and densities, the, the, uh, even the QCD vacuum is essentially melted and the uh, quarks and gluons, the fundamental particles, which are usually constrained in hadrons, are, are freed from hadrons and formed a, form a collective QGP system. So in these experiments, once you do the collision, this the, these, these, uh, QGP or this very high temperature region is created for a fleeting small time. Uh, a moment is an exaggeration. It's, it's uh, around there for about 10 Fermi over C, and uh, there's no way to directly probe it. All you see are the, uh, uh, are the final state particles as the QGP expands and cools, and the final particles make their way to the detector, and you can measure uh, the numbers, the uh, the correlations, the energies. Uh, you can sometimes identify some of these particles, but to to uh, to to connect this to the to the physics of QGP, you essentially need phenomenological models, and that's where hydrodynamics comes in very helpful. So, I, I let, over the last uh, 25, 30 years or so, uh, a standard multi-stage approach, uh, a standard model of heavy end collision, so to say, has has emerged. Then like this, uh, this image uh, made by Chun, which shows the various stages of, of these, these collisions and how you can, how you can connect uh, uh, the theoretical calculations to, to experiments using these models. So we start with colliding two nuclei, which in an altruistic case essentially look flat because of extreme Lorentz contraction. And for a very small time, the order of uh, half to one Fermi, uh, in a very short time, these, these uh, systems uh, thermalize or rather hydrodynamize where hydrodynamics becomes the, the applicable theory. And the QGP system then keeps expanding and cooling down uh, uh, described by viscous hydrodynamics. And at some stage it becomes so cool and so dilute that hydrodynamics is no longer the applicable theory. At that point, you, you convert that to, you transfer that information to, to, a, to a transport uh, system uh, to, to a particle distribution functions, hadrons in this stage. And these hadrons are still, there's a dense system of hadrons and hadrons keep interacting with each other, keep scattering off each other. There are a lot of uh, resonances which are created, which uh, decay to stable particles. And uh, at some point, even the hadron density becomes dilute and particles stop interacting with each other. And at that point, it's what we call kinetic freeze out and particles just free stream to the detector from that point onwards. And this is what you see at the final, uh, uh, this is what you see at the experiments. Of course, there's few, 
observable uh, few particles like photons, leptons, which uh, are emitted throughout the evolution and offer a rare probe into the system. But even then, then you can't really say which uh, which photon, which dielectron came from which stage of the evolution. What you see at the end of, is the is a cumulative sum of everything together. There are a few other probes, uh, especially uh, the, the interesting ones are the the uh, very high energetic jets which are created by hard scatterings early on, which pass through the system and tracking with it. There are heavy flavor particles, the, uh, these massive quarks, which are also mostly created in, a, in, in, in the early, early times and pass through, through the, the system all the while losing energy in it. So all these different uh, uh, multi-faceted uh, probes, uh, we have to, to, to infer the physics of, of uh, QGP. And that, that requires a, a very extensive state-of-the-art modeling to do this. Okay, so coming to, to hydrodynamics, uh, it's it's a very helpful theory because uh, if you have a system of uh, even uh, forget QCD uh, or or even quantum mechanics, just a classical system of n particles in three dimension, you have three uh, six n degrees of freedom, three momentum, three position uh, degrees of freedom, and if you have to track a very large number of particles, this soon becomes intractable. One particle is of course very easy to is doable. Three maybe three body problem you can do some perturbative techniques, but beyond that it's it's impossible, and uh, in in case of QGP, it's not even uh, even that picture is not very clear because if it's a strongly interacting system, uh, even the idea of a, of a individual particles is a little fuzzy. Then can you can you treat it as quasi particles or not? It's a large collective system where uh, individual interactions, individual degrees of freedom are is is, is very impossible is very difficult to track. But the simplification arises if you deal with the collective degrees of freedom, like like macroscopic quantities, like density, temperature, pressure, which 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 do care about the macroscopic interactions happening within it, but uh, are not particular. Uh, uh, you don't have to track every single interaction all the time. So microscopic interactions, which which make up the system, are imprinted on the macroscopic world by things like equation of state, which are system dependent. By things like transport coefficients, when when the system goes away from maximum entropy condition, how it's how it's maximizing entropy that's determined by these transport coefficients, and all that dynamics uh, uh, is is uh, reduces the degrees of freedom substantially, which which makes it tractable uh, while still uh, retaining the 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 physics of the underlying uh, underlying macroscopic world. So in this context, hydrodynamics is valid valid theory. And essentially, the mean free path when the particles in interacting, uh, the, the length of particle interactions is much smaller than the macroscopic length. So, if you look at the large number of particles, on average, you can describe them by macroscopic quantities. So, let's begin with the, what's called a, a system at global equilibrium. So, in, in this case, uh, these thermodynamic quantities like temperature, pressure, energy density, some charge, kinds of charge density. Entropy density, these are precise definitions. These quantities are defined at equilibrium. This is the world of thermodynamics. And these quantities are related to each other by the equation of state. And the specific equation of states depends on the, uh, the particular uh, nature of the system, the, the microscopic interactions which are uh, inside it. Sorry. And the particles have, uh, are, have equilibrium. Um, if there are quasi-particles, they have this equilibrium distribution depending on whether they are fermions or bosons. And this is some, something which, which is uh, very helpful and uh, even used in Jetscape uh, module if you, if you choose to use uh, what's called a brick calculation. So uh, you can, as, uh, it's, it's sometimes very intuitive and very helpful to assume that uh, you have a brick of QGP. So essentially, you have, uh, for example, if you are doing jet energy loss calculations and you have a new jet energy loss model, so before doing a realistic simulation to match the data, it's often intuitive to pass your jet through a solid brick of QGP, which is, which is not uh, changing. It's, it's at a fixed temperature and uh, everything is fixed, but uh, the jet will lose energy through it. And it's intuitive what, what, what's happening to see in, in, in that situation before you actually do uh, full expensive number of calculations to match the data. Now, if you want to uh, describe the realistic dynamics, you have to go beyond global equilibrium and uh, to essentially, uh, you, uh, the next step is to assume local equilibrium. And by local equilibrium, I mean that the system is assumed to have equilibrium in uh, any space-time point is assumed to have equilibrium in its immediate neighborhood. And I'm using the word neighborhood in the same uh, sense that mathematicians typically use it. So if you, uh, in its immediate neighborhood, there is, there is an equilibrium. So you can still define quantities like temperature, pressure, 
energy density and so on. But now these have a space time dependence. These are not constants of the, of the system. And um, now you also get non-trivial flow velocity because of these gradients, the system will flow to one, one from one part through the other and trying to achieve uh, essentially global equilibrium you know, if, if the situation allows that. So now the fluid evolution uh, from, from local equilibrium to global equilibrium is governed by the conservation laws of energy momentum tensor, the hydrodynamic equations. So this is just the conservation of energy momentum tensor and uh, any conserved charge current. So if you notice, there are four equations here, one equation per conserved charge and an equation of state. So we have six equations in total in, in ideal hydrodynamics or, or more if you have more, more than one conserved charge. Uh, so how does this uh, 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 the energy momentum tensor look? Uh, these uh, energy momentum tensors can be expressed in terms of equilibrium quantities. So this is how the energy momentum density is defined. This is the energy density and pressure, flow velocity, and delta mu nu is what's called the projection tensor. This is just the metric tensor. And the uh, conserved charge current uh, looks like this, where this is the conserved charge density multiplied by the flow velocity. So again, you have six uh, variables here, uh, one, two, three, and the three independent components of the flow velocity. The flow velocity is normalized. So there are only three independent components. So six equations and six uh, unknowns is a closed system which you can which you can solve for and given an initial uh, condition given an initial distribution of the energy momentum tensor and conserved charge density you can predict how it will look after a certain point. It's instructive to look at these quantities in the local rest frame to to see what these mean. So in local rest frame, uh, conserved charge density is just the local charge density. There is no flow, and the energy momentum tensor uh, is a is the is a diagonal tensor with the the component being the energy density and the three uh, other three diagonal components being the pressure, which is equal in all direction. And remember, it's still in local equilibrium, so it's isotropic. So the pressure uh, is, is uh, exactly equal in, in every direction at, at any given space time point. In, in a general frame, this is the interpretation. This component is the energy density. This, this is the pressure components. This is the density of momentum. This is the flux of energy in, in one, two, and three, uh, first, second, third direction. And the off diagonal terms in this blue uh, box here are, are essentially the, the momentum flux uh, uh, of, of ith component going in the jth direction. So uh, it's, uh, it's very helpful to see uh, these just these equations of ideal hydrodynamics uh, in local rest frame, and that tells us how, how, the, how, how the system evolves, how the flow develops. So the conserved charge. Uh, uh, con Charge conserved current equation essentially looks like this. So the current, so the local charge density changes, and the change is uh, proportional to the divergence of velocity. It's the same thing for energy density, but the uh, the uh, flow itself, the flow velocity changes. Uh, the, the change is proportional to the temperature gradient. So if you look at this, this is essentially acceleration, and acceleration is driven by pressure gradients. So. Uh, if you if you have a system even without flow in the beginning, if you have pressure gradients, the equations of uh, ideal hydrodynamics will will develop flow in the direction where the pressure gradients are the highest, and this is what essentially converts spatial anisotropy to momentum anisotropy. So if you have a collision system which looks like this in the beginning, and you see there is this sort of an oval shape in this direction, uh, where I'm pointing with my cursor, and if you uh, allow it to evolve hydrodynamically. Uh, th this is what the flow will look like. So these these are essentially the flow vectors where the, the length of the arrow is, is sort of the magnitude of the flow in that direction. And even here, you can just, by looking by eye, you can see there is more flow going in this direction than in this direction. So eventually, uh, as this keeps evolving, the most flow will develop in this direction and much less flow will develop in this direction. So at the end, when you look at the, uh, in the momentum, uh, if you look at this in the momentum coordinates towards the end of the evolution, uh, the the and I, the system will will look like this in in momentum space. Uh, so the so this is the mechanism. The pressure gradients uh, by by virtue of collective behavior is converting pressure gradients to 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 flow, and that converts spatial anisotropy to momentum anisotropy. So uh, harmonic coefficients, uh, um, which are very uh, helpful, useful measure of the anisotropy of the system. So this is something you can measure in experiments, the particle uh, spectra, and you can decompose it into its Fourier components. Uh, and the the uh, the, uh, the coefficients of uh, different Fourier components essentially uh, are a measure of the uh, anisotropy to that order. And in practice, this is done by particle correlations. Uh, 
but uh, this is this is what it looks like. So the black circles are are completely uh, isotropic system. But if you look at in this plane, if if you have a V two, that's a measure of how much is deformed as an ellipse. Uh, v three is how much is deformed as a as a triangle, and so on. So if if you have a, such a deformation in the initial state, and just by the virtue of pressure gradients, uh, that the deformation will be flipped by ninety degree in in, in momentum space uh, in for for v two by the end of the evolution. And if you don't have any collective behavior, then this uh, if you if there is if there is no fluid if there is no fluid dynamic flow, then all these hot spots will essentially uh, emit particles isotropically. So in momentum space, it will all look perfectly isotropic or almost isotropic. But the substantial V two V three measurements uh, were considered as as a uh, evidence of the creation of of something which is flowing a, a, a collective flow uh, fluid, uh, so to say. Okay. So now we want to be, be uh, even more realistic and we want to go uh, relax the condition of uh, even the local equilibrium. So you go slightly away from local equilibrium. In a uh, way to understand is that, that you, uh, you are slightly away from local equilibrium in the sense that you can still define equilibrium quantities there, but then you put uh, corrections on top of it uh, order by order. So away from equilibrium, the dissipative corrections come into play, the, the viscosities. And so this is what the energy momentum tensor looks like. Uh, so this is the uh, the uh, ideal energy momentum tensor as as we had seen earlier. But then you add a shear viscous correction and a bulk viscous correction. Notice the bulk viscous and the pressure correction look identical. So when uh, so what happens is essentially as the pressure uh, uh, drives the system, uh, uh, the pressure gradients uh, uh, accelerate the system and uh, uh, increase velocities. Uh, bulk viscous pressure, bulk viscosity actually essentially acts as a negative pressure, and it, uh, as the system is expanding, it tries to slow it down. So, so uh, p plus p minus pi can essentially be taken as, as a sort of an effective pressure, and then the difference between them will drive how fast the system is expanding or slowing down. Similarly, you can add a diffusion current, uh, a diffusion current to to the conserved charge. So, if if it's just ideal system, then the charge will the flow, I'm sorry, along with the background fluid. But if, the, if you account for viscous, uh, if you account for dissipative corrections, then there, there will be diffusion whether or not the fluid is flowing. Uh, uh, and and the, this will be determined by a diffusion coefficient. So uh, Navier-Stokes hydrodynamics, which is the, what the, uh, which is the most of uh, non which is how most of the non-relativistic hydrodynamics is done. And it's, First order velocity gradients is it's unconditionally a causal. So even if you have a system at global equilibrium and you perturb it slightly and you try to evolve it using Navier-Stokes hydrodynamics, you'll you'll immediately see superluminal speeds. This is usually not a problem in non-relativistic systems, but in in relativistic uh, hydrodynamics, it's it's, uh, it's more than an inconvenience. So if you have superluminal speeds, uh, that that uh, essentially makes your numerical solver or or uh, any hydrodynamic solution unstable. Because if you are going faster than speed of light in one, uh, your mode is traveling faster than speed of light in one frame. In another frame, it's traveling backwards in time. So, to in 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 practice, you we need at least second order theory with relaxations built in. So, Navier-Stokes is the first order correction to hydrodynamics and uh, first order correction to the local equilibrium uh, uh, energy densities. And the 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 second order theory is is a is another term of correction to 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 that. And th th that's what. The min that's what's uh, required in the minimum. So, uh, with with relaxation times, so in if if we are just using Navier-Stokes hydrodynamics, pi mu nu looks uh, is equal to this term. But with relaxation time, there is a delay built in. So pi mu nu is essentially going to this term, but with a delay. There are of course uh, other terms, and there are cross terms between different dissipative components, and th there are uh, many ways of deriving it from both from uh, from a strong, uh, strongly coupled limit and from uh, kinetic theory. But I'm not going into those details here. Just, just uh, look at, uh, I just want you to uh, focus on these equations. Uh, here, the, the new, uh, new variables appear. Uh, so for a viscous uh, correction term, you have the shear viscosity here. For bulk correction, you have the bulk viscosity here. And for uh, charge diffusion, we have the, char uh, the, charge, uh, di the diffusion coefficient. And so essentially in, in second order theory, all these dissipative terms are promoted to be independent variables with their own 
in their own right and uh, uh, they have their own evolution equations. Of course, these evolution equations are coupled uh, with, uh, with each other and with the uh, overall energy momentum conservation. You can't violate that. So the, the, these equations are evolved and that, that information goes back into the uh, evolution of energy momentum tensor. So now let's look at these. Uh, sorry. Uh, there's a question on the slide. Yeah. Can you, you say, so what do you exactly mean by relaxation building in your previous slides? Uh, okay, so uh, a, a very simple way of seeing this is if if uh, relaxation uh, if, uh, if if you uh, take to this side if, if, so essentially if you if you evolve this equation pi mu nu this is the the time derivative of pi mu nu it will go if there are no additional terms it will go to this value but with uh, if you write the equation in this particular way there there is a time delay built in which makes sure there are no superluminal speeds. So this this value will still go to this, but with with a certain delay, and that's that's relaxation time, and that uh, relaxation time we can uh, determine by kinetic theory or by other means. But essentially, that that that's another variable in the in the, in the theory. And does that answer the question? Well, I think so. We can go. Ahead. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just go ahead. So. Uh, Let's look at these uh, uh, the three new coefficients one by one. So to leading order, uh, and it's uh, pi mu will still go to to the the, uh, the Navier Stokes limit. Uh, it's, it's proportional to the shear viscosity, and shear viscosity has attracted immense attention in our field for for, for last three decades or so. Uh, the shear viscosity, the value of eta over s, the shear viscosity over entropy density, is expected to be very close to what's called the KSS bound. So uh, uh, three people, Kovtunson and Starinitz, uh, did an ads CFT calculation where they came up with the value of eta over s to be one over four pi in, in conformal theories. And this is often taken to be the lower bound of uh, how low this this um, this uh, viscosity can be in 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 uh, in, in nature. And uh, if you look at this paper about uh, 17, 18 years ago. By uh, Chernai, Kapustin, and McLaren, and they, they did some calculations of the shear viscosity for pions and pion and kion gas, and uh, at low temperature and QGP at high temperature, and it it sort of shows, shows the behavior that uh, the the eta over s is lowest near the crossover temperature, and it's uh, the, this now this is something which is seen in in many different systems or. Uh, uh, in, in nature, say liquid helium, uh, oxygen. Whenever there is a phase transition, uh, the the eta over s is lowest near the phase transition uh, point. So even if uh, at at uh, uh, zero baryon densities there is no phase transition in QCD, it's a crossover. You still uh, expect this behavior, and the the value of eta over s is is very very uh, very low, um, the lowest in, known in nature. So uh, but now, what does shear viscosity do? So, uh, shear, this this pressure is is a uh, this shear viscosity term in energy momentum tensor is is uh, proportional to the velocity gradient, but it's uh, ith component of velocity, uh, the derivative of ith component of velocity in jth direction. So essentially, if two fluid layers are flowing at different speeds, shear viscosity will will uh, uh, will try to resist that and bring them at the same speed. So essentially, shear viscosity smoothens the system and reduces an isotropy. There's more velocity in one direction, less in another direction. It will try to to match them or smear them, so to say. And this this you can see directly in observables. So this is an early calculation of uh, of uh, viscous fluid dynamics by by the Ramashkis in 2007, where you see the the v2, the uh, the second harmonic coefficient, and you do the simulation with different values of eta over s, and uh, the higher the value of shear viscosity, uh, lower the v2. So the anisotropy, the momentum anisotropy is is decreasing as the system is being smoothened because of shear. Now let's look at bulk. To, to leading order bulk uh, term looks like this, where you have a bulk viscosity, the coefficient here, and it's proportional to the fluid uh, uh, divergence. So if the system is expanding, it will resist that. So bulk viscosity essentially acts like a negative pressure, something that, uh, I said earlier, and it, it slows down expansion. Pressure gradients uh, uh, accelerate the, the expansion, while bulk viscosity deaccelerates it. And if you look at this bulk viscosity uh, zeta over s um, profile uh, as a function of temperature, 
uh, uh, from from uh, this paper about again uh, 13 years back. So more, uh, I just want to point out that more recent uh, calculations have a more diffuse bulk profile. It's not as sharp and it's usually not as high either. But I like this profile because it it you, you can see what 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 uh, what bulk viscosity is doing in an evolution or uh, during the evolution of the system. So I just uh, I'm going to take a moment to, to, to describe this plot. So this is the temperature axis, and this is the ratio of bulk viscous pressure to the equilibrium pressure or the, the accelerating pressure, so to say. And in, in this panel, panel B, each point is, is a, uh, each, each point here is, is a, essentially one fluid cell in, in the whole space-time evolution of the system. So, the, and the, this is the histogram of uh, the the ratio uh, of the the number of uh, fluid cells which spin at a particular temperature. So as you go to lower and lower temperature, the system becomes more diffused, and there are more fluid cells. So of course, there's there's a peak here, and the, there's the uh, at very high temperatures there are very few fluid cells. So the uh, the value here is very low. But you see another peak here, and this this. Uh, uh, corresponds to this peak in bulk visco uh, bulk uh, viscosity. So essentially, what's happening is that the fluid is expanding, and as it reaches this temperature region, the deacceleration increases. The expansion slows down, and uh, when eventually it still cools down further and uh, overcomes this peak, the expansion still accelerates. Just it's just like a traffic flowing with, and hitting a red light. So you're going, and then you hit a red light, and you slow down, and uh, red light lifts and the traffic starts accelerating again. So this is what's what's happening here. So you see more uh, the, this this peak here. Uh, many more fluid cells spending longer at at this particular temperature because of the bulk viscosity. But does it show up in in observables and uh, or is it just an artifact of of uh, of uh, the the evolution simulation? Well, actually, it does show up in observables and at places where you would expect it to be. So look at the. Uh, spectra of identified particles and width and with uh, so the solid lines are with shear viscosity and uh, with bulk viscosity I'm sorry and dashed lines are without it so spectra has change and uh, what's what's uh, more intuitive is to look at the mean PT or the average transverse momentum per particle and uh, because of bulk viscosity the acceleration slows down it's uh, 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 the velocities of individual particles decrease. And uh, as a result of that, their, their uh, net transverse momentum decreases. So this, this brings down the, the uh, bulk viscosity, brings down the, uh, the mean PT of, of, uh, of, of observables, of, of identified particles. And the, the effect is larger for more heavier particles than, than for, for lighter particles, um, at least on, in absolute terms. Uh, now, uh, this not only... Uh, it it uh, it slows down the mean transverse momentum of particle. It also necessitates recalibration of the shear. So if you look at uh, again the same V two, uh, and uh, well this is V two, V three, and V four, and you you uh, you uh, you try to uh, match the data with with uh, uh, with the simulation, uh, it, and the, 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 this has often been uh, the measurement which uh, which is used to tune or extract the value of shear viscosity. And if you in introduce bulk viscosity, so now you have to tune both of them together, and there is a substantial reduction of shear viscosity that you need to explain the same data. And this, the, the, this, this, this is the first example in, in this talk that we see that all the multiple uh, parameters of QCD are, have to be tuned in parallel to explain all the data, all, all the different uh, observables together. So this is what bulk viscosity is doing here. It, it, it's slowing down the system, reducing the uh, transverse momentum of particles. Now the final one, look at the baryon diffusion. This is what it looks like. And with the coefficient, uh, it acts on the gradients of uh, essentially the chemical potential. Now, if you look at, uh, uh, so uh, the CB is essentially the, um, similar to, to kappa. And as you increase the, uh, the uh, baryon diffusion coefficient, if you look at the uh, rapidity dependence of particle multiplicity for charged hadrons, pions, kaons, it's not really affected if you if you're increasing the baryon diffusion coefficient. Uh, charged hadrons mostly consist of pions. That's the most uh, single largest contributor, and the next one is of course kaons. So these two dominate this anyway. But if you look at baryons, which are which are affected by the uh, uh, by the baryon current, then if you're increasing the baryon diffusion coefficient, it essentially smoothens out the system again. So without 
with, without any baryon diffusion, this is how your uh, rapidity distribution of protons looks like. I'm sorry, I didn't write it here. This, this, is, the, this is the data for protons. But if you include, if you introduce uh, uh, baryon diffusion, this uh, proton distribution is modeled as you increase the baryon, uh, um, uh, baryon diffusion coefficient. And so essentially, all these these uh, dissipative systems are uh, are, are sort of uh, they, they, they they try to smoothen out the system, they reduce anisotropy, and and they uh, and and they uh, essentially end up uh, uh, producing entropy. So remember, uh, in in this. Uh, uh, you are slightly away from equilibrium uh, when, when these uh, uh, transport coefficients or these uh, dissipative effects come into being, and dissipation is essentially trying to bring it back to entropy, uh, entropy maximum. So you also produce entropy, and, and you change the, the dynamics of the system in these particular ways. Okay. Maybe, maybe it's a good point to start to answer some questions. Yeah, sure. Um, yes, uh, can you go back to slide 15? Sure. Yeah. So first question, can you explain what the centrality percentage means? Uh, okay, uh, so uh, centrality percent, so when you, uh, in, in experiments, you're colliding two nuclei uh, at, uh, at, maybe I can use a diagram from later in the, yeah, this, this might be a good figure and I'll come back to this later again, but when, when two nuclei collide, they, they can be uh, head-on collision, two nuclei almost uh, overlap each other and they can collide with different impact parameter. And centrality is essentially a measure of that, that uh, a very central collision, 0% centrality is essentially two nuclei are colliding head-on. So all the nucleons in the nucleus are taking part in the collision. But as you go lower or as you go to higher centrality percentage, you're essentially going to more and more peripheral collision. And at some point, it's just grazing each other. Uh, that's the ultra peripheral collisions. In, in practice, you measure this by uh, by looking at the total number of particles generated, because obviously if you have a head-on collision, then all the nucleons participate and there'll be more particles produced. If you have a peripheral collision, they will have a very small system, which will last for an even shorter time and, uh, and very few particles are produced. So that's what, that's what uh, centrality uh, is. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's another question on slide 15. Uh, why are some quantities more sensitive to ball viscosity than the others? So, uh, well, uh, in this particular case, uh, uh, we noticed that uh, bulk viscosity introduced an introduction of bulk viscosity has also tuned the, uh, we have to all retune the shear viscosity too, to, 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 to match the experimental data. But it, this, this one, even with the, uh, with different shear viscosities, it, it, uh, uh, it, uh, you, you, uh, you, you need, this, this essentially shows that you need bulk viscosity. And so, uh, some quantities are more sensitive because bulk viscosity is sort of acts in an isotropic way. It, it's uh, it's just uh, slowing down the expansion, and so this is uh, this is the this is the measure of the momentum of average momentum of each particle, and so something that like that will will be directly affected by bulk viscosity. Uh, particle spectra will be affected by bulk viscosity because it's producing more entropy, hence you, you produce more particles, but. Uh, in, in many other observables, the, the effects of bulk viscosity will sort of be canceled out. So not every uh, transport, not every observable is uh, sensitive to every uh, every parameter of the system, so to, so to speak. So in, in case of bulk viscosity, the, this is most sensitive in, in, a, in a very intuitive way because of the slowing down of the system. But uh, uh, in, in, a, in, in every case, it's not that uh, obvious what it will affect and what it will not. And for that, you need more systematic uh, calculations and uh, uh, in these these days people use Bayesian analysis to see which which observable is affected by which particular parameter or transport coefficients in this case yeah, yeah. Uh, are there more questions Jin? that's the question so far uh, any other question from the audience if you want to ask before we move on you can raise your hand if you have any questions Okay, I think you can go on. Okay, yeah. Let's speed up a bit. So uh, this is the flow chart of, of Jetscape and uh, I'll essentially be, uh, we'll be essentially focusing on this part where you start with an initial state, the, the soft part physics, so to say, and uh, you, you have an initial energy distribution or helium charge distribution and you do viscous fluid dynamics, eventually do hydron cascade. So I'll just go through these steps one by one. 
So initial state uh, uh, is, 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 has been a topic of, again, of uh, immense interest over uh, since the heavy ion collision program came into being. And much of the initial final state and ice drop in momentum, these harmonic coefficients can be attributed to just to initial state geometry. So sort of uh, as a function of centrality that that's uh, sort of preempted by that question. If you, if you have a more peripheral collision, you have sort of this shape in the initial state itself. And obviously you get more flow in this direction, less flow in this direction. And you, you, you see in a, a momentum uh, final state momentum and isotropy in, in, in this particular way. If you have a less impact parameter, the two nuclei are overlapping, then it will almost be a circle and then isotropy will be much less. But still there are fluctuations because of nucleon positions and that, that fluctuations will give rise to small triangular shapes, small quadrilateral shape and so on. And that will, give, that will eventually result in flow harmonics of different order. So if you, just because of these fluctuations, even though there is no obvious triangle, you have V3 greater than zero, V4 greater than zero and so on. So th these initial state models, uh, especially geometric models are very helpful and uh, uh, have been in very popular use, things like Monte Carlo Clobber, which, which, which is a mode you can select even in Trento during, uh, within the Jetscape framework. Uh, you can have uh, slightly more sophisticated initial state models like IP Glasma, which uh, not only accounts for the geometry, which, which is, uh, it does, it, the, the collision geometry is inbuilt in it, but on top of that, it accounts for color fluctuations in the uh, IPSAT approach, which is combined with the Yang-Mills equation. And the uh, color fields are also evolved using the Yang-Mills equation. So the initial pre-equilibrium phase is, is uh, actually simulated and, and uh, not neglected in, in, in this particular initial state model. So it has subnucleonic flow fluctuations uh, of a pre-hydro flow before it gets matched to hydrodynamic uh, uh, evolution. And uh, even the viscous terms can be initialized in non-trivial vein. In Monte Carlo Global, you just sort of get an energy distribution system. And you can pass it through something like a free streaming thing to, to, to mimic pre-flow. But uh, uh, so th these are just different, uh, th these are different approaches to, to model initial uh, states with, with their uh, with, with different degrees of success. Now you uh, come to hydrodynamics and uh, uh, popular package within uh, the Jetscape framework is music to do this. It, it has, it's a realization of the relativistic hydro, viscous hydrodynamics to second order with all the additional terms included that I didn't show. Uh, it's, it's solved using uh, some what's called uh, kurganov tadmor algorithm, which is good in dealing with sharp gradients and shock waves, which is what you have in these, these uh, collision systems. And it has been used in, in uh, over the last uh, um, 13, 14 years for, for uh, uh, simulating uh, different aspects of heavy ion collisions, ranging from small systems to electromagnetic observables to uh, bulk viscosity and, and uh, effects of bulk viscosity and so on. So eventually when your system is, uh, 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 another input in, in, in hydrodynamic uh, flow is of course the equation of state, which uh, which helpfully we can get from ab initial calculations, and that that's a very important input in 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 our uh, in our modeling of heavy ion collisions. So this is the equation of state from uh, the hot QCD collaboration, and uh, essentially what you do in practice are uh, lattice QCD calculations are high temperatures are matched to hydrogen resonance gas equation of state at very low temperatures, and that matching is is uh, is uh, slightly non-trivial in in a sense that matching should ensure that the derivatives of thermodynamic quantities are continuous to all order. Otherwise, you'll essentially introduce a phase transition uh, in, in, in your model, which is not there in nature. Uh, so it, uh, the, the derivatives have to be continuous to, 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 uh, to, to all order. And uh, this, the particulars of the equation of state are actually observable in, in experiments. Uh, observers like spectra, collective flow, all, all these observers are sensitive to equation of state because equation of state essentially determines the speed of sound, but the sound by which the uh, average more travels in fluid, and that 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 uh, that changes how much uh, an isotropy is being generated, how much flow is being generated, how much entropy is being produced. All, all that, uh, all those observables are sensitive to to this particular um, uh, input to to a model. And finally, as the system expands and cools, it becomes dilute enough. So these these are, this is ju just one particular line in the uh, uh, the the x-axis in the evolution system, uh, as and how the temperatures evolve as a function of uh, uh, proper time. So these lines are the isotherms. So when at, it reaches a certain temperature, the mean free paths are comparable to macroscopic scale, then hydro is no longer a valid description. 
and at this point you we 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 free we freeze the hydro calculations to uh, to man match it to the uh, uh, particle distribution functions to to uh, to to then uh, further evolve using transport approach and this is done by the cooper fry prescription where this is the particle distribution function and this is the fluid cell momentum and uh, the sort of the uh, the uh, spatial uh, surface vector on on these these the uh, iso uh, temperature isotherms and uh, the, the this this uh, not only the equilibrium momentum but even the uh, the viscous corrections are matched to non non equilibrium corrections to particle distribution function by the the cooper fry procedure so at the end of the hydro evolution, you get a list of particles which you have generated from Cooper Fry uh, product, uh, Cooper Fry uh, prescription, and these particles are then fed to an afterburner like Smash, which is again uh, you can use within the jet scheme framework. And uh, so, for example, uh, the from from the fluid degrees of freedom, now you have uh, moved to these um, hadron's degrees of freedom, which uh, as you see, there are many resonances here which keep decaying, and the the particles. Uh, scatter off each other uh, depending on their individual cross, cross sections and uh, this is just one thing to be careful about the list of hadrons to be used here and the list of hadrons to be used in uh, getting the hadron resonance gas equation of state to be used in hydro needs to match so that that you're doing an apple to apple matching of energy density and, and uh, you're essentially there's a continuity in the in the in, in the simulation of the system so after at the end of this procedure you you get you get essentially what some something like what experimentalists see. You get, have a list of particles going, you know, uh, in in the in the direction of detectors, and then you can calculate all the observables that the that experimentalists are measuring in the experiment, and then do a model to data comparison to to understand the the physics of of QGP. Okay, so uh, I'll take the last uh, twenty minutes or so that I have uh, to and talk about a few of the topics in in. Uh, uh, in, in uh, new developments of, in uh, in uh, aerodynamic modeling of uh, um, of, of uh, heavy end collision systems, so this is an experimental driven field, and uh, the, with with the new experiments come new challenges in uh, in in, in uh, phenological modeling. And so, for one example, one of this is that uh, the recent beam energy scan program at RIC uh, started uh, uh, well uh, did collision. Ex experiments for lower intermediate energy collisions. So uh, early RIC uh, collisions were for 200 GeV collision where uh, baryon chemical potential is almost zero. So you can essentially overlook baryon current, but now you are doing it for very uh, lower energies where you're reaching this region of the phase diagram. It, this comes with a lot of different challenges, the initial state itself, uh, the, that approximation that the two flat nuclei colliding is no longer valid. In, uh, the hydrodynamics, you need additional conserved charges, the baryon current for sure, but sometimes even uh, strangeness and um, electric charge current that needs to be specifically evolved. The equation of state uh, uh, from lattice is strictly restricted to this line, um, you, 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 but you need an equation of state in this region, and you can sometimes do it by uh, by an order uh, by a perturbative expansion to this equation of state, or you can do a perturbative QCD equation of state, which is matched to um, uh, to, to lattice equation state at uh, uh, mu b equal to zero. So the, these are all uh, uh, phenomenological tools which are still very, very much active areas of research and, and being developed as we speak. Uh, finally, particleization. Uh, these are really small systems and you're trying to measure uh, particle correlations. And in this case, uh, it's, it becomes very crucial to see where exactly the particles are coming from. And that for that, you need something called microcanonical phase out. And not to mention that there's a critical point which might be lying somewhere here, along with the first order phase transition line, and there, there's the whole dynamics associated with it. Uh, uh, the, there can be critical fluctuations, there's spinoidal decomposition, and all this, those things. Uh, but at the end of the experiment, all you have are those particle tracks. So to, to link uh, uh, the, these, uh, the physics of this phase diagram to those observables is a very challenging task, and it's, it's um, uh, and uh, uh, fuels development uh, in, in the hydrodynamic model yeah, itself. Can I, can I stop you maybe yeah. here a little bit? Uh, there's one question, two questions on the chat is, uh, uh, is are there any 3D initial connection available inside JetScape? I think so. Uh, is, is, uh, 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 Shin, you might be a better person to answer this. Is, is, is that true? Yeah, I think yeah, the 3D yeah. Toronto will be soon in the JetScape will be available, and also 
in the next hands-on session, there'll be a 3D global initial conditions okay. to do the exercises. Uh, yeah. um, okay, uh, are there any other questions people have? If you want to uh, resolve before we move on. Okay, I think you can go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, to begin with, just uh, I'll just uh, cover a few aspects of, of uh, say, beam energy scan collision uh, simulations. So nuclei now take uh, uh, more than thermalization time to cr to cross over. So essentially, for for a flat nuclei, they all cross over. Uh, they cross each other almost instantaneously. But if you go to a low energy collision, uh, the, this this is uh, it takes much longer. So uh, gold gold collision at I think this figure is for seven point seven GV. Uh, it takes about three Fermi to cross uh, uh, completely cross over each other. Oh, sorry, this is a function of energy. So at around uh, seven GV, that it takes about three Fermi to to, uh, to completely pass over each other. So by the time the first uh, nuclear nucleon collision happens, uh, and by the time the last ones happen, the first ones have already thermalized, have formed a fluid, and started expanding. So you can't really do a fixed initial state and, and then evolve the system. So the system needs something called dynamical initialization. The energy momentum tensor needs to be initialized multiple times throughout the evolution, and that the way to do it is is uh, modifying, well, not modifying, but uh, adding a source term to the energy momentum conservation equation. And the source term is being fed by the collisions as they happen, similar for baryon density current, which now becomes important if you're if you're in that re region of the electricity phase diagram. Uh, so just, just to show some illustrations, this is how the collision geometry in 3D looks like. This is a function of rapidity. If you have a 200 GV gold gold collision, all the the collision points, is in, uh, by which, which I mean the, the the place where the actual nuclear nuclear collisions are happening, are all uh, concentrated at uh, at mid rapidity because the nuclei are colliding uh, are passing over each other almost instantaneously. But if you go to lower energy, say 11.5 GV collision, they are scattered around in the uh, uh, in, in rapidity directions. So There's a much broader system which needs to be uh, which which uh, the 3D initial condition is absolutely necessary, and not only 3D initial condition but a dynamical initial condition. And uh, here you see, uh, so this is at zero impact parameter, but if you have some impact parameter there that brings a tilt in, but that tilt is negligible for, for 200 GV collision, but it's much more pronounced for the, the, the 7 GV collision. Uh, the, the energy density and uh, the baryon current, uh, they, they look very different. So these lines are essentially energy density depositions in, in the system, and uh, these black dots are the, uh, are, are the baryon sources. So uh, for, for if, you, if you look at TZ coordinates, this is how it looks like. For very high energy collision, it's uh, essentially along the, the timeline, and the, the baryon sources are, are essentially grazing the light cone here, uh, not the timeline, but the light cone here. For lower energy collision, it's much more diffused. There's more baryon stopping at the center. And this is you see in, in, the, in the, the tau eta coordinates as well. There's more baryon at mid rapidity, but, but uh, in, in very high energy collisions, it's, it's all, uh, all goes towards the edge of the system. So high, um, and high energy collisions, 200 GV and certainly LHC collisions are almost boost in variant admit rapidity. And you can usually get away with 2D uh, uh, simulations if you're just concerned about this region. But uh, 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 not, not so much for, for the lower energy collisions. So I uh, just wanted to show you some images of how the temperature evolution looks like. So if you have a 200 GV collision, this is the temperature as a function of proper time. And you start with very high densities and the system is expanding and cooling and the temperature slowly, uh, temperature is slowly going down. But for a 7.7 .7 GV collision, you start slowly. Only a few nuclei have collided until this point. By three Fermi, all the collisions have happened. So the system has actually grown because of uh, in, uh, infusion of more energy from those source terms. And then it starts expanding and cooling down and become, become becoming smaller and smaller as the uh, cells on as the the fluid at the edge of the fireball uh, keeps freezing. Uh, for baryon chemical potential, it's uh, the the picture is quite different. So the, here the energy densities at very high energy collisions are more uh, are more the temperatures are higher, which is to be expected. There's more energy there, but for baryon chemical potential at mid rapidity. 
admit rapidity, there are very few uh, uh, baryon current sources in, in very high energy collision. So the, uh, the baryon chemical potential is much low and it, it stays low in, in that way. But for, uh, for, a, uh, for a low energy collision starts building up and then as more and more sources deposit, uh, uh, deposit their uh, baryon current, it, it, it becomes larger and the chemical potential uh, uh, stays larger in, in the sense that it, because there's more baryon, uh, baryon density deposition at mid rapidity in low energy collisions, here the baryon chemical potentials are, are much more pronounced than, that, than, than at high energy collisions. I'm sorry. I'm about it a little bit. Okay, so uh, let's look at, um, uh, let's change gears a bit and look at uh, one another interesting development over the last few years, which is the medium response. So, and this, uh, this is something in which uh, uh, Jetscape has um, contributed immensely. So jet medium interaction can introduce um, energy in the collective medium. So typically when you pass a jet through the medium, you're worried about what the medium is doing to the jet, but the jet is also losing energy and that modifies the medium as well. So, uh, and that can also be included as a source term, the same way we did dynamical initialization for, for low energy collisions. At very high energy collisions, the jet energy loss can be, uh, can, can, can fuel in, uh, can infuse in energy in the system uh, by, by uh, acting as sources of energy momentum in, uh, during the evolution. And uh, so this is what it looks like. If, if a jet is passing through it, it it's passing much uh, at speeds much larger than the speed of sound. It essentially leaves a Mach cone, this is the same phenomena which happens say, when, a, when a, uh, a supersonic jet goes through the atmosphere. So essentially, you have these Mach cones where the energy density is higher just near the jet, and then it leaves a trail of uh, um, uh, cooler um, uh, trails behind it. And this is what it looks like a jet passing through the system. And uh, essentially, in, in, if you look at in rapidity versus uh, the azimuthal angle frame, there is an energy enhancement near where the jet is. And this is something you can see, uh, the, which is visible and observable. So if you look at something like the jet, uh, uh, jet, jet shape function, the hydrodynamic contribution is substantial, especially as you go to lighter and uh, higher and higher, uh, larger and larger uh, cone angle, because the energy deposited by jets sort of uh, um, is the extra, produces extra hadrons in, in the jet cone. But again, the jet wakes are uh, also uh, uh, de depend on how um, and are affected by by the viscosity, specifically the shear viscosity is shown in this figure. So if you take a very simple, smooth hydrodynamic evolution system and pass a jet through it in this direction, so starting from center going outward, and you look at the energy excess in the, in the final state uh, isotherm when it reaches a, a certain low temperature, and you will see that at the zero angle, there is an excess in energy. Uh, but the sharp peak is diffused as you increase uh, as you increase the shear viscosity because it, it, it doesn't like an isotropy, it's trying to smoothen it down. If the jet is going in the opposite direction, then the, the wake which it lifts uh, in the wake of the jet passing through, there is a lower temperature region following it. And so there's essentially a dip in the energy density in, 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 this, in this particular angle, at this particular angle. And it's again diffused, uh, the, the, the feature is diffused more if you have more shear viscosity. And in a more realistic case, if it's going at an angle, then the, the the excess is not so symmetric, but what's what's consistent is that viscosity tries to to uh, to dampen down the the system. So this is a matter of detail which way the fluid is flowing and uh, how how the the viscosities are acting on on these uh, these jets on on the on these wakes. So uh, instead of looking at very high energy jets, you could also look at uh, lower intermediate energy jets, which are say uh, 4 to 20 GeV, which are, uh, uh, which are many more in number. Uh, so if you, if you study that using medium response, using source terms in hydrodynamics, uh, medium response does not al only alter the jet observables, but can substantially modify the medium itself. So these four, five, six, 10 GeV jets are, uh, are not thermalized. They're, their relaxation time is longer than the lifetime of the fireball. So they can't effectively be treated in the fluid uh, as collective medium. But they are there, so they, they will interact with the KGP and they will deposit energy, and uh, uh, it will substantially alter the the evolution. So if this is what a, a fluid cell, uh, this is what the fireball looks like in uh, Tavita coordinates at, uh, without any mini jets, a particular system. But if you include more, min, uh, if you include, introduce mini jets, it starts altering the evolution. So the, the quantity here, what, what I'm calling PJ min, is is sort of the cutoff in the simulations of 
the minimum uh, minimum transverse momentum of a of a jet uh, to to qualify it to be included in the simulation. So if you include only uh, jets which are above 10 GV, there are few of those jets, and it uh, changes the system evolution slightly. If you reduce that value, so you include everything which is above 10 GV, but also everything between 7 to 10 GV, and there are many more of those jets, and the the modification is more substantial. And if you bring this down further to 4 GV, then the system evolution is almost unrecognizable um, from where you began with, with, with no jets. And th this, this has consequences uh, even for uh, the soft physics observables. So I know. Okay. Yeah. Let me go back to slide 31. So here's a one question. Sure. Um, the question is, can I re relate the first plot with EP at zero to high highly central heavy ion collisions? Uh, this to, uh, to uh, can, can I relate this plot to very central heavy ion collision? Is that the question? Maybe Archita, you can ask the questions, answer the questions here. Hi, uh, thank you. Yeah, so my question is like, yeah, the, so the first plot, uh, can I like directly relate it to the high and highly central collisions? Uh, so, uh, well, uh, there's a caveat here. Uh, no, not directly because in the realistic, uh, so this is a very, very simplified picture of, of a very smooth profile. In a realistic collision, there will still be fluctuations because of the nucleon positions within the, the uh, within the uh, within the nucleus. But that may, uh, but what's more, even more important that the jets don't necessarily originate at the center of the nuclei, right? The binary collisions are happening everywhere, and a hard scattering can happen at the peripheral at, at the edge. Uh, so at at uh, at any point in the system, this is just a very simple uh, sort of proof of principle uh, calculation just to show how the jets look like in in, a, in an idealized environment. So. So this this will be similar to to a, a yes in some sense it's similar to a very uh, very central or ultra central uh, a collision, but uh, it only goes so far. It's it's it's, it's not very realistic in, in in that case. Not to mention there's only one jet going in one direction. In principle, there will be a back to back jet, so there will be jet in another direction as well, uh, right? So this this is very just just to illustrate the the principle. Um, and just a follow up question to the, your answer. So, uh, this doesn't necessarily mean like the third plot is like corresponds to the ultra peripheral as well. No, I mean the the, the uh, this is this is still a central collision. It's just the jet is originating uh, not at center but at slightly off off center position. So in in a in a in a central or peripheral collision, uh, the jets can can originate anywhere there is a nuclear nuclear collision, right? So. This is still a uh, this is still a very central collision. It's just that uh, the jets have originated off center, and the the jet direction is not uh, correlated with the flow direction because flow is happening. Uh, the the system is expanding circularly outwards, but this is uh, sort of at, on a tangent to it, and that's why the 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 excess the energy excess cone is sort of uh, uh, modified. Yeah, so it's, it's not that this is central, this is peripheral. It's, it's just a very simple illustration of different jet positions and directions. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so yeah, so so with mini jets, the uh, uh, the uh, the the average uh, transverse velocity changes. Uh, if you include more and more mini jets, these uh, the the flow is substantially larger. Uh, in principle, this would affect both soft and hard observables, also electromagnetic observables. Uh, and uh, most importantly, it uh, if you introduce many jets, which are these non-thermalized modes in, in, in a concurrent uh, hydro evolution, then a significant portion of hadrons can come from these mini jets, and which requires recalibration of, of hydro parameters, which is what we're trying to, which is one of the main goals of, of these simulations to, to, to extract these quantities. So the, this this uh, uh, this table shows the fraction uh, fraction of fragmentation hadrons versus total total number of hadrons uh, for different values of pg min uh, for zero central and uh, mid, well zero to five percent collisions uh, collision centrality and forty to fifty percent centrality bin and uh, just a caution this is just the fragmentation hadrons so the jets are also depositing their energy in the medium which also leads to to more hadrons being produced which is not uh, reflected here. But even just just the fragmentation hadrons can um, 
contribute up to 25% of total hadrons in a, in, in a 40 to 50% centrality collision if you include everything over 4 GeV. If you should include everything over 4 GeV is, is, is a questionable thing. That's why there are three different uh, cutoffs. It's, it's not very obvious at what point hydro should stop and what point um, jet physics should take over. It's, it's probably not even a clear line. It's, it's, uh, so we need more realistic models which uh, smoothly matches the two regimes. But, but as a first step uh, for for uh, for different uh, cutoffs, you 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 have substantial energy uh, substantial energy contribution coming just from mini jets, and that requires. So if you have no jets, uh, so what what I'm calling S factor here is is the overall normalization of the initial state. So this is the value which was used, and this is the value of uh, eta over s that was extracted. If you introduce few mini jets, this requires slight recalibration as energy is coming from mini jets now. That also changes shear viscosity a bit. This, this starts looking much substantial. It's about a 20 to 25% effect if you include everything above 7 GeV. And if you include everything over 4 GeV, which is probably not realistic, then, then this goes off the charts and the, the, the effect is very, very big. But of course, that's again probably not very realistic. Okay, so uh, 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 in my final few minutes, I'll, uh, I just want to point out that. Uh, in, in this in this era of uh, multi messenger heavy ion physics, where you have all these kind of uh, the different uh, observables from starting from jets and heavy flavor, photons, dielectrons, of course the soft observables, and you can measure uh, different correlators. You can measure the spectra. You can measure their um, the, um, the 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 uh, charge balance functions. All all these kinds of different uh, observables, and you have all these different uh, physics uh, out input which goes in your simulation, which is essentially what you're trying to tune, the equation of states, viscosities. Um, each, um, each one of these uh, uh, is directly responsible for a different subset of this, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, these observables. And it's, it's not very obvious uh, changing uh, one, will, how will it change everything else? So essentially, it's, it's, a big, it's a big box with different dials. Which, which you have to tune together to, to essentially match all of these, uh, to explain all the experimental data at once. And uh, over the last few years, uh, Bayesian inference has been the popular tool of doing it. In older days, you would just look at a subset of observables and you would focus on a subset of your in, in physics input in your simulation, and you will try, you try to, to tune it that way. But to do it all together, you, you, you need something like Bayesian statistics. And over the, year, over the last few years, a lot of these, uh, uh, these Bayesian studies have come about, and this is still a very uh, active, ongoing field. And uh, I've not included actually every um, every study that has uh, uh, that has been done uh, in, in this regard. So you 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 get um, you get the, the the temperature dependence of shear and bulk viscosity in different uh, studies, and they they were all done with slightly different assumptions, with slightly different models, and so you 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 have slightly different results, but eventually. As, as, as we develop in this field and we include uh, more and more data and, and have finer and finer models that this this uh, this should show a converging trend over the over the next few years hopefully okay so my time is almost up and uh, um, so I want to end with the summary that uh, uh, the take-home message should be that relativistic hydrodynamics has been very successful in explaining evolution of KGP in heavy and collisions so, and over the last uh, two or three decades uh, there has been significant development in this field, which which keeps on ongoing um, as more and more experimental uh, challenges come about, uh, and the, the models have to evolve to to meet that. Uh, this is a field led by experiments, and uh, so these models are still evolving, and uh, they incorporate more and more physics. They incorporate it in in better ways than than the, they were doing earlier. And uh, we are entering an era of uh, the systematic model to data comparison using Bayesian's. Um, techniques and uh, relativistic aerodynamics will keep playing a central role in describing the collective behavior uh, of, of, of the collision systems. The other new developments, which I didn't have time to go into, so there's uh, a way which have fueled more development in the hydrodynamic modeling. So there's something called, uh, there's collectivity in, in, in small system collisions, which uh, about which we been talk a little bit uh, in the next uh, hands-on session. The hydrodynamic fluctuations, uh, the, the far from equilibrium behavior of fluids. So uh, this is just, uh, what we talked about was just uh, slightly away from local equilibrium, that's viscous hydrodynamics, but there's been considerable development in studying far from equilibrium behavior of how relative security is act. And there's a more, uh, uh, on the theoretical front, there is there's uh, improved causality and stability analysis, which, which is uh, exciting, uh, which is something very exciting going on in the field. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions.
Let's go ahead. Okay. Thanks, Mayank. Yeah, so we're open for questions now. Um, if anybody has a question. There are two questions on the Slack, or three maybe. Uh, first is, is there any comparison with the measured experimental results when we do mini jets with different PP cuts? Uh, well, in that case, uh, yes. So uh, the, these these extracted parameters were done to to match. Uh, so you you can explain the data. So uh, in this particular study, we just considered uh, um, uh, particle spectra and and V two, and you can of of course explain it without mini jets. But when you include mini jets, uh, the uh, the parameters that you extract from model to data comparison changes. So yes, you can explain those. But but no, there has not been a very extensive study of how it will affect other observables or uh, more more refined correlations, like say even plane correlators or, or how it affects electromagnetic observables. So those things uh, have not been done yet. So the, the the message is that essentially, if you include mini jets, you can still explain the data, but but that changes the the parameters that you're extracting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The second question is: Are shear viscosity and bulk viscosity not doing similar things? Resistant to system expansions. What are the differences? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question, Chen? What's the difference between shear and bulk viscosity due to the expansions? So it's just the the it, it, it's an essentially both are both are resisting the 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 um, the velocity gradients, but they are they are acting it in uh, acting in different ways. So shear essentially tries to smoothen out the system. Uh, between different layers of fluid, if they're flowing with diff different velocities, it, it will try to match them and bring them to a same velocity. So it's essentially the gradient, of, it, uh, it's gradient of jth component of velocity in ith direction. So a fluid flowing in this direction, how it how it's matching with the fluid uh, uh, in, in the layer next to it. And bulk viscosity, on the other hand, is sort of an isotropic thing. It it's acts on the variance. So how the expansion is going, uh, the isotropic expansion is going on, and it tries to slow it down. So so yeah, it's 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 a it acts in slightly different way, but uh, but uh, the, the commonality is that both are dissipative coefficients and end up uh, uh, bringing the system closer to to equilibrium um, rather through maximum entropy uh, condition. Yeah, in other sense, the power viscosity is kind of slowing down the radio expansion. It's isotropic. Yeah, and the shear viscosity mostly will reduce the flow difference in different directions. So it's more sensitive to anisotropic patterns in the flow. Okay, there's a, one more question. Uh, in Cooper Fry, what determines the resulting particle species? Does all species get affected by the same QGP properties like flow velocity temperature? Uh, to, to different degrees, yes. So Cooper Fry is, is essentially you're matching the energy density to all possible hadron species that you know of that exists. So the, the distribution function will, uh, essentially the, uh, the, the equilibrium distribution function will, will, will be a function of their mass. The, uh, uh, and then you, you, the, the sum total of all the different particle species should in principle correspond to the, 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 the energy content of the energy momentum tensor. Uh, now different uh, fluid properties will affect Different um, uh, different particle species in slightly different ways because uh, if, if it becomes more massive, then then it's uh, less sensitive to certain things. Uh, it will uh, certainly flow out slower once once you do particleization. Uh, uh, but yes, but other than that, yes. Uh, so uh, you, you don't uh, per se determine the particle species. You you take you essentially take every particle species that you know from say particle data group uh, handbook and you you. To try to uh, sample each one of them. There are, of course, challenges uh, with respect to some specific species. If it's if the mass is not well known or if it's very broad, and then 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 it's a matter of choice uh, or, or it's just a matter of model choice. What what you are doing with that? But other than that, yes, more more uh, more well known particle species are all included in the simulation. So it looks something like 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 this. Yeah. So so in specific, so the 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 choice of particle species is usually. You want to match the hydro fluid cell to hydronic, like hydronic gas, which is the same, which has the same degrees of freedom when you match to some hydronic transport like smash. Yeah. Usually, like this is built in the underlying equation state as well as uh, when you do the Cooper Fry uh, um, 
particleizations. Yeah. Okay, there's one more question. How important is the inclusion of a pre-equilibrium phase before hydrodynamics? Uh, it is important. I did not, I don't have any slides to show the effect on observables, but uh, uh, so uh, uh, especially recent Bayesian studies have shown that uh, 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 the data favors models with pre-equilibrium flow. So if you have something like epiglasma, the pre-equilibrium flow is inbuilt in it, but even without that, even in a geometric model, uh, these days is becoming more and more common to, to not just uh, 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 do a geometric initial state condition and start from the hydrogenization time. The, the pre equilibrium flow is, is modeled by using things like uh, free streaming. So essentially, it, it builds in the initial flow before the system starts hydrodynamically involving. And so the flow builds up much faster. And the, 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 that affects uh, how fast it hydronizes, how fast it's flowing out, and that, that affects observables in the end. And, uh, it seems that data data definitely requires you to, or, or at least favors uh, inclusion of a pre-equilibrium flow in, uh, in in these models. Yeah. Okay, that's all the questions on the select. Anybody have any other follow-up questions? You can feel free to open the mic and ask. Okay, I think okay. Uh, we don't have any other questions show up yet. If you have any questions you have in mind, you can still post them on the Slack channel. We'll actually answer there. Um, but uh, right now I think uh, we will thank Mayank for this talk. And Mike, do you have any other things to- No, just uh, we have a 15 minute break now and we resume at 10.30 with the hands-on session with Wen Bin. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Shall we start? Yeah, we can get started. It's ten thirty now, so um. When Ben's going to lead us in a hands-on session about uh, bulk dynamics within the uh, Jetscape framework, take it away, Wen Ben. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Welcome back. And uh, in this section, I will talk up. I will help you. I will lead the uh, bulk dynamics hands-on section. Uh, I think most of you have joined the Slack, join nineteen hydrodynamics, and uh, you can post your questions, comments, and even complaints in the Slack, and experts will respond to you. And also after the section, also if you have still any questions, you can email me. Okay, let's start. Uh, this is the contents of this hands-on section. Uh, first, I would like to briefly introduce the 3D, 3D global model and which coupled with the music dynamic model. And also brief introduction, briefly introduce the Xcape framework. And I will help you to get familiar with the Xcape code specifically for the small system and uh, do some test run and also build some intuitions on the soft hard corrections in small systems. And uh, I will assign your homework just to reproduce the hydro and the jet spectra in PV collisions at 5 TV uh, showing the below two parts. For example, the left-hand side is the PD spectra or pie chart from zero to 20 GV and the right-hand side is the jet PD spectra in PV collisions with a different jellycon size. Okay, I think the previous uh, lecture have already given you a very good uh, introdu introduction of the dynamic background. Uh, let me briefly introduce you the uh, phase diagram of the QCD. As you know, uh, this is a QCD phase diagram as a function of temperature and uh, branch high chemical potential. And you are supposed to be our first order phase transition line at high chemical potential regions and at low chemical potential regions. There is a cross order cross phase transition. And at uh, there are some real, there is should be a critical end point. So it's a top, it's a hot topic in heavy ion communities. And also the right hand side is the evolutions of heavy ion collisions, including different stages. And 
There is uh, also many interesting or important questions to be addressed. For example, how do the QGP transport properties change in the large, uh, large in the large belt dense environment at low energies? And also, what's the smallest QGP fluid? For example, how what when will the QGP vanished in go to the smaller small systems? Okay, as I described earlier, if you go to the low energies, uh, the strategic dynamics will become important. Uh, for example, uh, let me give your intuitions. For example, this is the space time distribu distribution of nucleons at the first nuclear nuclear collisions at uh, the god god collision at 200 GeV, and the, the right hand side is low energy at 20 GeV. You can see that at top rook energies or at 200 GeVs, uh, the speed of nucleus is much close to the speed of light, and uh, the Lorentz, in the left frame, the Lorentz boost effect will become stronger compared to the low energies. So in the left frame, we see that the overlap time in low energies is much larger compared to the high energies. You can even estimate the overlap time of two nucleus in the left frame, which is tau overlap here, which just because uh, two times radio divided by the gamma factor and the flow velocity and the velocity here gamma is just the Lorentz factor Lorentz factor and the vz is just the velocity in the z directions and this plot shows the overlap time in central gold gold collisions and in central d gold collisions from low energy to high energies you can see that at low energies for example at 7.7 gv the overlap time in gold gold collisions is more than three fermion, which is comparable to the higher dynamic evolution time. So in the low energies, the initial overlap time process, overlap process is important to simulate the heavy ion collisions. And uh, recently, Trin and Bian have developed a 3D, 3D dynamical initial model named 3D Global. Uh, in this model, the energy will deposit into higher dynamics step by step. And specifically in the 3D global, the collision geometry is determined by the MC global. And after the collision, the incoming quarks are decelerated with a classical string tension. And the deposit energy will, will the lost energy will deposit into the higher dynamics. And in the framework of the 3D global plus music, the conservation for energy momentum and net belt density is imposed. And the energy momentum current and net belt density are fed to the higher dynamics with as a source term as shown here. And still, uh, you can see more detail in these two papers about the uh, 3D global and plus music. And then I just want to give your intuition how this framework, 3D global plus music, Plus, UIKMD, this framework works well. Uh, just let you know, the UIKMD is just the hydronic afterburner code. And this is the mean PT of pan and protons as a function of centrality beams in large large collisions at LC. And also, we, also this is the uh, collective flow of V2, V3, V4 as a function of centrality beams in large large collisions at LC. And the lines are from this high 3D hybrid model simulation and uh, the Point are from Alice data. And the middle plot is a charge multiplicity distribution as a function of pseudo rapidity uh, in different charge beams and also from 10.7 GV to 200 GV and also compared to the Phoenix measurement. And also the right hand side shows the, uh, the multiplicity of identified hydrons, for example, pion, kion, and protons uh, from 200 GV and 7.7 GV at different central beams. This slide just want to show that this framework named 3D Global plus Music plus UIKMD works well in describing various identified hydrons and also anastatic flow from low energy to high energies in high ion collisions. In this, sec in this section, uh, actually I will focus on the small systems. For example, this is the measurement of the collectivity V2 and V3 in P gold, D gold, and H3 gold at weak energies. Here, the field point is the measurement from star, and the open point is the measurement from the phoenix. We clearly see that for B2, the star and the phoenix measurement are cons consistent with each other, but for the B3, we clearly see that 
the storm estimate here have the significantly larger than that compared to the Phoenix estimate. And another point I want to say is that when, when experimental plans to measure the collectivity, they often use the two-particle coalitions and the stop message of the two-particle coalitions focus on the middle rapidities. And in Phoenix, due to the detector, the message of two-particle coalitions between the middle rapidity and the backward rapidities. And as you know, for the asymmetric small systems, the long-term dynamics will become important. So in order to understand both the star and the Phoenix data, we need the three plus one D simulation. And uh, this is a simulation of the longitudinal decorations. For example, um, during the long evolutions, the decorations, for example, this plot shows the decorations of the event plan. In other words, the event plan will have a rotation in the eta directions. So of course, the two part correlations between the middle rapidity and the backward rapidity uh, are below the one. For example, this is the event plan the correlations of second order and third order calculated from this 3D hybrid model. In this calculation, the reference angle is taking the backward rapidity regions, which will the Phoenix take the uh, reference angle. And if you look at the middle rapidities, the elliptic flow correlation in D gold and chemistry gold remains strong with increasing eta difference, which ensures the strong geometry response in the Phoenix measurement. But for the for the P gold, for, for the P gold in of, it, of elliptic flow and uh, for the uh, the decorations of third order even the plan, the decorations is stronger, which means that the longitudinal decoration or longitudinal dynamics is important to understand the two-party collisions in these three small systems. And this is the this is the uh, calculations of the differential elliptic flow and differential triangle flow in P gold, D gold, and chemistry gold. Here, the red lamp and red point is, is the Phoenix measurement or the using the Phoenix definitions calculated by the higher dynamics. And the blue line and the blue point is calculated compared to your star data or, or using the star definitions. For the, um, if you look at the V2, you see that 3D hybrid model will produce the Phoenix V2 and V3 uh, reasonably well for all three systems. But if we look at the V3, uh, compared to the blue line and the red lines, the hydro calculations with star definition gives the larger V3 compared to the Phoenix definition. But, but on the other hand, the Higher calculation, 3D higher calculations with star definition still underestimate the star data. In other words, this calculation shows that the 3D hybrid model can express the 50 difference between the star and the Phoenix measurement of V3, but the, we still cannot describe simultaneously the star and the Phoenix data well. And it requires a future study. And uh, then uh, recently, Atlas also reports their collectivity in UPC event. UPC means that there is no direct hydronic collision, but, there, uh, but in this process, the one of the nucleus will emit the quasi real photon, and this photon will collide with another nucleus. And this is the measurement of the two particle collisions in the UPC event from Atlas. This, and they also they, extra, they extrapolate, extrapolate the V22 and V32 in UPC event as a function of multiplicity and also differential elliptic flow and compared to that to PV collisions and the periodic collisions. We see that UPCs have a similar order of magnitude and trends of the collectivity as, a, as other previous measured hydronic systems. As you know, um, hydrodynamics works well in heavy air collisions and also small systems. Also, so it, it's, a, it's straightforward to extend the hydrodynamics from heavy air collision small systems even to UPC event. Here, the lines are from the 3D hybrid, hybrid hydro simulations and compared to the Atlas data. Here, the open, pure, open point is the V22 and the V32 in periodic collisions from Atlas. And also, the field point is the V22 and the V32 in UPC event from Atlas as well, and the lines are from uh, model simulations. We see that 
model will, will reproduce V2 and V3 uh, in peak order collisions, and also model can uh, reproduce V2 in UPC event. In other words, the V2 hierarchy between P gold and gamma, P light and gamma light is reproduced by, by the model simulations. And we totally found that the difference between our V2 between gamma light and uh, P light is not caused by the initial geometries, but caused by the longitudinal decorations. For example, the right hand side shows the longitudinal even the plant decorations. Here we take the reference angle between one and 2.5 and calculate the longitudinal even the plant decorations at uh, negative 2.5 and negative one. You see that here the red line is for the P gold and the blue line is for the gamma, the gamma lead. You see that the longitudinal decorations in gamma lead is much stronger compared to the proton lead. So it, it, it causes the smaller V2 and it causes the V2 hierarchy between the gamma lead and the P lead. And if you look at the V3, our model uh, still underestimates the V3 in gamma lead, which requires the future study. And uh, since this is a hand-on section, I will not talk detailly about the progress result. And you can reproduce all the results showing above with the open source code I by music, or you can also reproduce all the results with the open source code JSCape X -Cape code in this GitHub. And uh, then I will talk, uh, I will focus on the X -Cape, uh, framework. Uh, one of the goals of the X -Cape for a small system is to solve the VT, VTPT puzzle in PLAD collisions. For example, this is the atlas measurement of the VTPT in PLAD and the RPLAD in high PT regions. As the atlas data shows that uh, people observe the clearly non zero V2 in high PT regions at uh, PLAD collisions, but uh, we do not observe the, the geoquenching effect at uh, the high PT. So it's part of where this V2 comes from. And I'll, then I will show you the workflow of Xcape code for the small systems. In the Xcape code for small systems, there is a many two parts. One is a soft part, and the, another one is a soft, hard part. First, we use 3D Global to generate the uh, binary collision positions, and also use the PCR to simulate the initial proton proton hard collisions and then we use the I matter to simulate the part interest part showers and uh, uh, then the I matter propagate back to of the part shower and uh, after the I matter we subtract the and the hard part energies in the 3D global and uh, after the subtracted the 3D global will generate the angel strings for the higher dynamics and then followed by the music for bulk evolution and uh, use ISS for the Cooper fry sampling and particleization. On the other hand, I matter uh, will followed by matter for final state shower, and then we will use the PCR color color a uh, color uh, stream fermentation for higher hydronize all the hard particles, and then we combine the soft hydron from ISS and hard hydron from stream fermentation to the final state calculate some observables. Okay, up to now, do you have any questions? So there's one question on slide 13. So what is QPLAT on the right-hand side of the plot? Or RPLAT? Oh, mm -hmm. oh RPLAT, uh, we, can, we can understand is um, a nuclear modification just uh, the cross section in PLAT collisions and divided by the PP uh, cross sections. So if it's, it's close to one, means that there is no nuclear modification. If, and if they are below one, means that there is some hard medium modification or the jet quenching effect. Yeah, I guess the question is at least use QPLAT in the legend. Probably there are some slight different definitions compared to the standard RPLAT. Right. Uh, I, actually, I do not know the details about QPLAT. <laughs> I think they give the same message of the RPLAT. Okay. Yeah, I can just comment very quickly. So the RPLAT is a ratio of the normalized to the 
to some global number that you get, right? To some end call or something. Uh, QP led is just a per trigger normalized kind of an observable. So it does not have that, uh, that global normalization in that case. So it, very similar picture. So similar to what Ben Bill said, but slightly different technicality. But the fact that they show the same gives you confidence. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No, there, there's a, one more, another question. Would you still use 3D global plus music plus RSS for PP collisions? Yeah, yeah, I will show you how to run 3D global plus music plus RSS in the escape code for the PP collision. I will come, I'm gonna show you so. Okay. Well, that's the question so far. Okay, um, then I go to the hands-on section. Okay, I think you can open the readme file I showed in Python in Slack, this one. I think it's very convenient for you and you can follow, copy the command from this readme file. Okay, uh, let me start. Uh, just. Uh, Please carefully complete all the below instructions in the risk readme file, and also you can ask questions in the Slack channel. And then I will first introduce, I'll give a brief introduction of the background and the goals. And also then I will build the Xscape framework, download the necessary code package, and set up the Docker container, and build the Xscape code with 3D Global, uh, Matter music and ISS, as I showed as I told you before, and also get then I will help you to get ready for the hydro section. First is copy hydro section script to the working directory, and also set up with your notebook and set with different parameter files. And then I will give you some exercise. First, run through the global alarm, get some intuitions of the uh, dynamic energy conditions. And also run Xcape code on 3D global plus I matter only get some iterations of soft hard collisions in small system. And then uh, if time allows, I will have I will show you how to run the full Xcape code that including the 3D global plus I matter plus music and plus ISS. Okay, and then is the homework. Okay, let's start. Uh, the background is, I think previous lectures have already given you a detailed background of Xscape code. Um, the Xscape just uh, the X and collision with a statistically and a computationally advanced program envelope, which is a second or enhanced project of the JSCAP. And it extends the framework to include the small systems, lower energies, and also future electron ion collisions. And this framework will allow for a novel functionality such as the ability of main simulation clock to go back and forward and deal systematically with initial and final state evolutions. And in this, in this section, I will use only uh, the following modules in within Xscape a framework. We, for example, we will use PCR for initial high, hard patterns and the 3D global for energy condition for soft part and the music and ISS. Okay, uh, as I told earlier, this is the workflow of the uh, Xscape code for small system, just a 3D global and music ISS for soft part and the PCR matter, I matter for the hard part. Okay, uh, this framework introduced uh, the non-trivial soft and hard collisions based on the global energy conservations. I'm showing here, since we subtract the energies from the uh, 3D global. Okay, uh, this section, we have the goal just the participant. I hope participants will understand how to run Xscape code with a few default parameters. And uh, with 3D global, I hope participants will uh, understand the dynamical neutralizations at the low energies and the asymmetries for asymmetric light nuclear and heavy nuclear collisions. And also run escape codes, understand soft hard collisions and un understand his output and calculate basic observables such as high spectral and from low PT to high PT regions. 
Okay, let's start. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, create a build, create a folder JScape uh, Docker. You can, actually you can copy the command in the readme file. Uh, since I already have created before, so it shows file exist. And then uh, we get inside the JScape Docker and uh, get clone the necessary materials from the GitHub online. You can just uh, copy these two commands into your terminal and uh, run it. Since I, ha I ha have already run, I have already cloned it before, so I do not run it here. If you have not downloaded this G code, just run it in the comment. Okay. Um, then I'll continue. If you have already downloaded this G code, just uh, then I will show you how to download the necessary uh, modules needed for this hydro section. First, we need to get inside the escape external packages and run these three commands just to, to uh, download the 3D global uh, music and ISS. And uh, after this is done, you can check it by this command. First, you check whether what you have in the JScape Docker. If you run this command, you have the issue. You, you will show two folders. One is named Summer School 2023, and another one is Escape Code, Escape. And if you, and also you need to check have you already successfully downloaded these three modules? You can run this comment in your terminal and you should see uh, three folders, uh, three global music and ISS in the in this folders. Uh, it, it's, it's important since these are modules needed for the following hydro section. Okay, I will give you maybe one minute. If you, after one minute, if you have not uh, successfully finished this step, just press no or uh, press cross term. After finishing this step, you should see 3D global music and ISS in the uh, Xscape external package folders. So the other yeah, question says, since we already have a build folder from yesterday lecture, should we delete that or to make another one for today? Oh, I suggest you to make another one. So maybe I think there's some difference <laughs> between this today's build folder and the tomorrow, yesterday's build folder. So they were not mixed with each other. <laughs> Uh, just to remember, this is outside the Docker. We haven't get inside the Docker yet. We need to download the code outside the Docker. After this is ready, then we are getting inside the Docker. Okay, I think uh, I will continue. Do you want to generate a poll? Uh, or reaction to see whether everybody is online or uh, uh, is in, in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you have not uh, finished this, yes, just press no or press cross. <laughs> I see no cross, no nodes yet. Okay, I see some yes. Okay. I think we can continue. Okay, I think we can. Then um, 
we are going to getting we are going to use uh, Docker. I think uh, based on the yesterday's section, I think you have already installed Docker, so you can uh, ignore this step. I assume you have already installed a Docker, and then uh, we are going to get inside the Docker. If you use Mac, just run this command. If you use Linux, just copy this command into your terminal and run it. But if you have already used this JavaScript name yesterday, maybe you have to change another one. Or you have, if you have already run this readme file uh, yesterday or just before, then you do not to, uh, delay, do not to launch another name docker, just launch this docker name by this command. For me, I have already uh, run this uh, script before, so I do not create a new docker container, I just uh, open this con docker container in my terminal. Okay, this shows that we are inside the docker now. Maybe to just keep user and some numbers. And also uh, there is some useful uh, useful comments. For example, outside Docker, you can exit to leave the Docker and use the Docker container. AS uh, bar A to show how many names, how, how many names do you have and uh, start one of the previous existing Docker container. Okay, I think you are ready. I think this is straightforward. If you have to not have any typos. Okay, I think we can get continue. Then now assume I, all of you are inside the Docker. Let's get inside the X game code. Just to copy this comment and uh, create a build fold. Okay, since I already built it yesterday and uh, we get inside the build folder. This is a place we want to run in the following. And Maybe I give you 30 seconds to finish this comment. Okay, okay. This I think I don't think you have any trouble wrong this comment since it's easy. And also we need to copy the necessary script. From the uh, hydro set from the summer school July 19 hydro folder into the into the current builder folder. Just a wrong, or you can just directly copy this command and run it in the in your terminal. That's it. And you can see what what we have in the hydro section. You can just get inside the hydro. You can run just LS hydro section. You, you will have the some, uh, some files and folders inside the hydro section. For example, this is Jupyter Network to plot the result. And also there's a readme file. And this is the readme file, just this one. And some figures necessary to generate uh, the readme file and also the XM file, which is a parameter file used in, the, in this section, and also the folder named pre generated result, including the pre generated result. And uh, since it takes a lot much long time to finish to calculate this observable, so I just uh, show the result here. And if you later, if you have enough statistics, you can reproduce the same result. And also some source code in the replace files and also some short script to run the uh, PCI ISR test. This, this, is, this is help you run the 3D global plus I meter and also some script to calculate some observables.
Okay. Do you have any questions? So there's a question, why are we replacing files? Hmm? There's a question about why are we replacing files? Why are we replacing files? What? Why do we need to replace files? Oh, okay. Um, this is because the current X give code we, for specific, for specific this hydro section, I will need to replace some Pass and some parameters in the some source code of the Xcape code. But it's a very tiny modification. I will, I will show you how to replace the source code to the original JScape code. Okay. Um, I will move this part to the during when, during, during when we make the code. I mean, we need to a lot of time to make the code. So uh, during that time, I will show you details about the parameter files. So I ignore this part first. And then uh, we start to run the 3D global model. And then uh, we are going to get inside the external and the 3D global code. Just You can just directly run, copy this command and run it in the external, in your terminal. I assume you are in the build folder. And then we run the get, we run this command to get the necessary uh, library needed for the 3D global. Eight means um, build with eight calls, but if your computer have, do not have eight calls, you can adopt as appreciate, appropriate value you have. It will take maybe one minute. Since I, I have already, Run this command before, so I do not run in my computer here. You can run it. Takes maybe one minute. I will wait here for you, maybe one minute. Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask now. Okay, I assume you have already downloaded this code. I don't think you will get any error message if it's somewhat straightforward. And after you finish downloading the code, you just create a build folder inside a 3D global folder. And also then get inside the build folder and uh, say make dot dot. And also make, if we have any many calls, just a uh, uh, bar J, some number you have. Since I have compared it before, so it's very fast. For you, I think it takes 30, min, uh, 30 seconds to compare the 3D global code. And after you ho have already finished the make and adjust them, make install. And uh, then after finished making install, you can go to the previous directory. And after that, you should see an executable file, file named 3D, 3D um, mchlb.e. This is an uh, executable file for the 3D global only. And also you can see the input file, which is a parameter file for the 3D global only.
Okay, if you have finished this part, you can maybe you can press yes. If you have not, maybe press no or cross icon. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. I see some yes. Okay, then I will start to run the 3D globe alarm. For example, you can open. First, I'd like to show you how to run the gold gold. Mm. Then uh, we open the input file and change the parameters. Showing here, just one the projectile to gold gold and target gold gold. And the root means the central mass energies. First, we would like to run 200 GV. And uh, for this part, we want to simulate the central gold gold collisions. So we set B min to zero and B max to one. B min and B max is just the range of impact parameters in 3D global. That determines in heavy ion collisions, it roughly determines the centrality beams. But in small systems, you have to be careful. There is no uh, strictly corresponding between the B, B impact parameter and centrality beams. And also another, Important one is that there is a flag, means subject hard momentum. This flag is one means that we subject hard energies from hard part in, in the 3D global. If it's zero means that we do not subject energy. So it's zero means we can run the 3D global alone. So in this, in this part, currently we set it to zero. So if, because we do not want to subject energy. Okay, after the finished, we just copy it and uh, get outside. And then you can run the uh, 3D global by this command. And one input, the one. Here, the first one means that we run one event. And input is in parameter file. And the second one means it's the random seed. If it's a negative one, means we use the system time as a random state. If it is a positive number, means that we use this positive number as a random state. So in this calculation, we fix the random state to one and calculate a 3D global alarm to generate the initial stream files. Okay, for my computer is not so good, so it takes for a while. <laughs> Can, can you can you probably stop here a little bit and uh, wait for people to catch up? Some people yeah, yeah. want you to go a little bit slower. Okay. Yeah, just a reminder, just to change the parameter file name input. You change the projectile to gold, target to gold, and the roots means the central thing. Collision energies, first we set 200 and the B mean is zero and B max is one. And also we turn off this flag to subtract energy means we set this parameter to zero. Can you post a modified info file on the Slack so people can have a copy of this? Yeah, yeah, you can just see it here. Click to see mm -hmm. the part of here. Yeah. And after you've modif finished the modifying the input file, just run this command. And after it finished, you should see a stream file named string event zero. This, is, this contains initial strings generated by the 3D global. Okay. After it finished, um, you, ju you just uh, rename it to a new name because I would yeah, like can, to- Can you generate a poll to see how students are in the progress? Okay, do you mean? Okay, if you have yeah, already just put the mark on the on the on the zoom. Mm. Yeah, yeah. If you have already 
run the gold gold collisions. If you have finished this step, just press yes. If you haven't, haven't just press no or press cross. Okay, here is one no. Let me just tell me where, which problem do you have or where are, where do you stop? Mm. Oh. Which step do you have issue? So oh, yeah, so I think it's a question about the changes in the info file. Okay, yeah, I will share again. Uh, since I, I haven't- show the, show the info file to the students on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Actually, I plan to talk, introduce input file detail later. So, roughly, just uh, change the projectile to gold and the target to gold, and uh, this other this is default value to zero and the roots to two hundred GV and use quarks to one, and uh, this are just uh, that you do not change these parameters and uh, change the B mean to zero, B max to one. And these are the default values, just leave it alone. And uh, also the last one you to change just the subject hard energy to zero. And others just leave as the default values. Just showing here, this one and uh, this one, and just you need to these parameters in the input file. Others just use the default values. Okay. And after finished, just a call seal and get outside. After you have after you modify the input file and then just run this command. This command in the inside the 3D global folder. And then you should see a string event zero, this file. This is the initial files for the dynamics. Okay. If you have finished this, press yes. If not, press no or cross. Okay, I see several, yes, maybe we can continue. Okay, and uh, then since we need to run other systems, so we need to rename this stream file to a new name. For example, first, this is the God God 200 GV. So we just rename this file to uh, a God God 200 GV. We just directly copy this command and run in your terminal. And similarly, above we run the God God at 200 GV, then we, in your same input file, we change the collision energy from 200 to uh, 19.6 GV. We change to this energies and leave others unchanged and then copy and save it. And then run the 3D global again. Just so run this command again. In this way, you will see the square root is 19.6 GV and the cross section changed accordingly.
Okay, so finished again. We give we name it to God God nineteen point six GV six. Okay. If you have finished this step, just press yes. If haven't, I press no. Oh. Okay, I see some yes. Okay, then the last one we need to change the same input file. This time we run a small system to run the decode operations at um, 19.6 GB. The only thing you want to change is to change your projectile to Deutron D and save an output, then run the 30 column alarm again. And give him a new name, name the decode a 19.6. Okay, um, I assume you have already finished this step. You can see what you have now. You have the two, uh, you have three stream files, name the stream event called God uh, 19.6, and uh, stream files, stream, stream event called God 200, and the decode uh, 19.6. After you have finished this, then uh, we are going to visualize them by the Jupyter notebook. Uh, the other tricky thing is that if you have already installed the Jupyter notebook and already installed some necessary modules for plot, then you can open your terminal outside the Docker and open a Jupyter notebook. Just to use this command, Jupyter Notebook in a terminal and it will open in a web browser. And uh, you can get inside the this directory. I think you see the JSCAP Docker and XCAP and the build. Not sorry, sorry, not build. No, 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 yes, it's build and uh, hydro section and open this hydro hands on section. Just as this direct this pass. If on the other hand, if your computer have not installed Jupyter Notebook or haven't installed the plot. More Python part modules. That's also fine. You can also you can run it inside the uh, JavaScript Docker. First, you need to run. You need to install the necessary Jupyter lab inside the Docker. Just run this command inside the Docker. Just copy this command and in a terminal. And also get inside. Uh, the build folder or not. And then run the Jupyter notebook inside the Docker. The, disadva the disadvantage of this process is that since we need to continue to run other commands inside the Docker, so if you want to, in, in this case, you have to uh, terminate, you have to uh, quit uh, the notebook and come back to try to come back inside the Docker container and run code. If you launch the notebook outside the Docker, then you do not have to get outside the Jupyter notebook. Okay, uh, let me know if you have already. The questions, do you ask mm -hmm. people to install notebook inside the container? Yeah, just run this command. 
this is not required, right? If you have Jupyter Notebook outside, you don't need to do it, right? Yeah, if you have installed your Notebook in your own computer, outside the Docker, do not, do not need to run this. Just launch them by this command in your own computer. And after you launch the Jupyter Notebook, just open this file in this directory. Okay, let me know if, if you have already opened this file, saying that's just showing here. If you have already opened this, press yes. If not, press no, first. I don't see any notes. So we can assume you have already opened this notebook. Okay, uh, let's continue. If you have already launched the notebook, just run the blocks by press this run button or you can run the shift plus enter. For me, I prefer to run to press this term. Okay finished. Okay, just let you know, uh, the path is already okay. So it's not in your chip pass, change this pass. And uh, first, this is the initial stream files in central goal -goal collisions. And also, uh, you can continue to run and also you can run the next block, just run the press the run button and it will output to the initial stream files in protocol at 19.6 uh, GB. Okay, maybe I can wait for a while. Someone told us you cannot open a job to notebook. Maybe give you 30 seconds. Okay. And then uh, you will run the blocks for the stream file in decode the collisions. After finishing this, you can see the stream three, three figures, uh, stream files in code code collisions at uh, 200 GV and uh, code code collisions at uh, 20 GV and also the decode at 20 GV. You can clearly see that for the initial stream files in for the collision 200 GV, you can see that at the middle rapidities, the tall range occupied by the strings is rather limited, for example, which means that at the 200 GV, almost all strings are thermalized below 10, uh, below is one from me. And also at the forward, at backward or forward rapidities, the tall range occupied by strings is still large, which means that even at high energies, the larger abilities requires the dynamical initialization or the string, the system will not initialize at a very short time. There's still a, a very sizable tall range needed to deposit all the string energy into the file, into the hydro. And also this is a stream for the gold gold collisions at 20 GV. You see that at the low energies, uh, even at the middle rapidities, the Tall range occupied by strings is still uh, is not small. For example, you need at least two from you to deposit all the strings into the hydro, which means at the low energies, even at the middle rapidities, the dynamic initialization process will become important. 
And also this is a string files in decoded collisions. Here, the left hand side is a gold, gold going side and the right hand side is a dual going side. We see that there are more strings in the gold going side compared to the dual going side. And also there is since it's asymmetrical collisions. So it will introduce the non-trivial longitudinal dynamics and introduce the longitudinal decorations or some um, new evolutions in during the hydro evolutions. Okay, I hope you this can give you some intuitions of the dynamics from high energies to low energies and to the asymmetric uh, small systems. Okay, mm, if you have already generated three part, just let me know. You can press yes. If you haven't, just press no. I think there are a few people has troubles open to the notebook when they have the within the container. Okay. I think that's because you need to add a special flag when you launch the uh, Docker container. Right? It's minus P A A A H. I'm copying the solution from Joe. To the okay. In case. Yeah, there are some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also tried some. I tried to open a open launch the notebook inside Docker. It's somewhat complicated. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you can just, if you launch the Jupyter Notebook inside the Docker container, and you can see this output in the terminal. And uh, if after this, you can hold the control key and uh, choose the open link. Oh. Yeah, choose the second one and also go to the go op and open this hydro section script. Okay. Okay, maybe we can continue to other stuff. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, then I will, then I will start to run the Xscape code. Currently, we only run 3D global code. Then I will help you, help you to run Xscape code. So we get inside the Xscape build folder directory and we we see make the file with the 3D global music and ISS on. We can directly copy this command and run in your terminal. If you are inside a Docker, I think you will not meet any error message. It should be okay. Okay, after CMake is finished, then you can make it. If you have multiple calls, we can use uh, bar J8 means we use eight calls to compile the code. If you have, if you do not have eight calls, just uh, adopt as appropriate, change the number you want. Okay, since I, ha I have already compiled before, so it's very fast for me. If you haven't, uh, I'm not compared it yet before, so it takes around 10 minutes. 
So during this time, I will show you, I will uh, show you how the details of the, of the parameters. Then like you can wait, let the computer compile the code. Okay, I will return back to the parameter files. Uh, in this section, we have the 3D global music, ISS, iMeter, uh, these modules. And for the 3D global, there is, a three, there is three parameter files are relevant. Uh, one is the user XM file inside the um, escape config, gscape main dot XM file. This XM file contains almost every parameters and we I do not change the parameters here. And another master XM file inside uh, the escape. Um, And another one, another master file is just inside the uh, X, X con configure and JScape user I met MC Global Music XM file, just a long name. This is a master XM file used. We mainly change the parameter in this XM file. And besides this, about two files, uh, 3D Global has his own parameter file. For example, um, inside the build of Directory here is a music dot input. This is just the same as input parameter I showed before. It's the 3D global his own parameters. And also for music, there is also three parameter files, except the two XML file in the JScape, and also there is a parameter file of the music underscore input inside the build folder. One being, can I stop you? I think there's still a few students lagging behind in terms of open the Jupyter notebook, uh, like the file. So mm -hmm. most of them have able to open Jupyter notebook from outside container. How do you open the notebook you have uh, from that? Oh, for me, I in outside open the notebook outside the container. Yeah, yeah. So most of the students also do that. Then they they cannot find the notebook okay you are using so can you tell them how to do it mm -hmm. mm. the notebook is uh, inside here so can you show them how to get there okay 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 maybe i can We enter get it again. For example, this is outside the Jupyter notebook, and I assume it's in the home folder. And we launch the Jupyter notebook. This is what we have, and choose this folder to just keep Docker, and uh, then. In get inside the X gap. And after that, we get inside the build. And inside the build, we just found the hydro section. There is a file named hydro hand on section dot IPYMB. So that's it. This is the path. and choose this file. Then after click this file, you will see this one. Okay, once you open this file, we just run the first four blocks. For example, first one is a uh, master blocks. Just press run button. And uh, this, this block will show you the string files in code code at 200 GB. And uh, this block show you the string files in 100 GB. And the next block shows the string files in Dgold. Okay. 
Okay. If you haven't opened the Jupyter Notebook, just press no or close. Yeah, I think you can go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, I will help you to get familiar with the parameter files. Um, the music, uh, music has a file to XML file and his own parameter music underscore input. And um, in this exercise, the JSKB use I matter MC global music dot XML is the master uh, XML file and it, it has a higher priority. It means that this X, this file will overwrite the ones others file other XML files. For example, MC global dot input, uh, music underscore input, and also even the uh, JScape underscore main dot XML file. This this file has the highest priorities. It will overwrite other or others in other files. Okay, uh, let me give you some example of the XML file. Uh, this is a very brief uh, structure of the XML file. This is uh, first a flag to set reuse hydro true or false. And if we true means that we re reuse hydro for many other events. This is because hydro, one hydro event takes much longer computer time compared to the one hard event. So, and also hydro do not, do not need so much statistics to describe the fluctuation or suppress the statistical noise. So we use we use hydro. For example, this is 1000 means one hydro corresponding to 1000 hard event. And the EI event means that how many hard events we want to run. And this V level shows uh, how many, what, what kind of message do you want to output on your screen? Four means that we output almost everything. Zero means that we only output the most important message on the screen. And this is and then this is a random state. Zero means that we use a system time to determine the uh, random state. If it's a positive number, means that the random state is fixed by this uh, positive number. And also some parameters for the piece for the hard process. For example, this pit had a minimum and a pit had a max in the piece here. And also, if if the pit had max is smaller than the pit had mean, means that it's an open end for the PCR, which means we do not have pit had max. And also, there's the anticlitch energy in PCR, and there is some this this is controls the parameters for the energy condition. MC global means that we use the three D global energy condition, and uh, there are some this is one of the parameters in the three D global which controls the energy loss of strings and also there are some block, uh, some some parameters for controls the music part is only one of the parameters in the music which is the freezer temperature and also some parameters in the uh, energy loss part for the hard evolution for hard part evolution and uh, Ismail in this Friday we'll talk more detailed about this part and also some parameters in the IS Cooper for sampling the other two parameters one is the number of repeating repeat sampling uh 10 means that we over sample 10 times based on one higher hard surface and also there is a flag to control whether to do the recent decay or not one means that we do the decay zero means we do not do the decay and also this is detailed for the parameters in the mc global there's projectile target, nuclear species, and uh, central mass energy. And we use the park degree of freedom or not. In the current escape code, we, uh, we, we only one option just use the quark degree of freedom. And also this is the, the range of impact parameter. And also there is some parameters for the string and the band junction parameter. 
and also this is a flag to turn on turn on the subject hard energy process or do not subject hard energy process. And this is the detailed parameters for the 3D global inside the XM file. For example, this there is a spike parameters that controls the energy loss of the strings. And also, uh, this is the detailed parameters in the XML file to about uh, the music evolutions. For example, we have the, uh, the winds of strings and the parameter controls the pressure dynamics and also the sharp shear viscosity, bulk viscosity, and also phase out temperature. And this is the uh, uh, digital parameters in the XML file controls and the loss part. And uh, just to let you know that if there are also other parameters of 3D global music and as I said, that are not controlled by the JSCAP XML file in these parameters, they are controlled in their own parameters. For example, 3D global, it has the music dot input, music has the uh, music underscore input and ISS has the ISS parameter dot data. Okay, that's all for the parameter files. Okay, let's return back to running the code. I hope you can, you have already compiled the code successfully. If you, if you have already compiled the code successfully, just press yes. If, if you haven't, just press no. Good, I see some several years. Okay. If you have compiled the code successfully and then uh, make run make install. Okay. After this step, you should see some executable files in your build folder. For example, you can, you can see the PCI SR test and the PCI SR music. These executable files in the build folder. Here, PCI SR test runs the 3D global plus I matter only, and the PCI SR test runs the 3D global plus I matter plus music plus ISS and the, the master parameters is inside the config just, just keep user iMeter global music.xm file. This file controls all the parameters. Okay. Um, I hope you are right. Yeah. You are ready for this step. Um, okay. And if you have already compiled the code, then make install table will not take so much time. Okay, um, if you have already success, then we copy the um, necessary script into the inside of your folder. You just directly copy this command and run in your Docker container. Okay, and um, then I will show you the soft hard corrections based on based on only run 3D global plus I matter. First, I will run the 3D global uh, without subject, which means that we change the MC, we change the parameters in the MC global dot input to this part. For example, we change the project tell run, we only run PP. So we change the project and target to proton proton and we change the energy to 5 TV. And also we change, we give him a large uh, B mean, B, B in impact on the range. We change it from zero to 
200 GV. And in this case, uh, we do not subject the hard energies reset to zero. Just to change this next three parameter files. And then copy it outside. Your question. And uh, if it's ready, just uh, run this script, just to copy this command and run in your terminal. Here, this command just run the run um run the three D global plus uh, I matter for one event. Here, only for illustration, only one uh, only run one event for the I matter and for the three D global and without hydro. Okay, it takes 35 seconds. And after finished, you should see a folder named, uh, should say named stream files zero in your build, inside your board build folder, this one. And also we need to, on the other hand, for the comparison, we need to to subtract energy in a 3D global, we just change the parameter in the MC global dot input. We turn on the subtract process. We only change to this one, to change this flag to one and leave others unchanged. And also we change the, to, to, only to see the, the effect, we change the parameters in this XM file to a large pit head, pit head region, ridge. For example, you shall see, we change this one, pit head minimum to 800 and pit head max to 1000. And uh, the energy is, is 5, uh, 50, 20 GV, just 5 GV. And leave other, on, other, other parameters unchanged. Then, if you have already changed this, then just copy and uh, return back to the build directory. You just need to change this place. Okay. After this is set, this is done. Just run the, the following comment. You can copy this comment into your directory and run it. It also only run one event, but we subject energy in a 3D global and set the PD head in PCR between 800 and 1,000 GV. And I will show you how this global energy conservation affects the soft part. Okay, it takes 30 seconds. After this, then we'll, we'll come back, we'll return back to the Jupyter Notebook. We use this Jupyter Notebook as I show you as you used it before, then go to the next box named the wrong X cube. And I just directly run this box. Okay, maybe I can wait for, for a while. Have you finished running these two comments? If yes, just press yes. If no, press no or cross. Good, I see some yes. Okay, if you have already finished run these two comments and you should see two folders in your build directory 
one is uh, string file sub zero, another one is string file sub 800. With this file photos, and then you come back to the Jupyter notebook, just run this block named run xkip and run this block. It will output, first it will output the full momentum of the string files. First is without subtraction means that first one is energy is 2.0, 2 5.02 TV and PZ, PX, PY zero. And if you set, if you subtract energy with the pit hat between 800 and 1000, then the energy is greatly reduced to 1.8 TV. And also it gets a non-zero PZ. Here we do not include the PXPY, so it's all still zero. And also you can see the plot of the energy distributions as a function of rapidity. The black line it shows without subtraction and the green line shows subtracted. We can see that after subtraction, the energy decreases significantly. Here we only run one event, so do you have some, maybe some have even the biomet fluctuations, if you have enough statistics, you will give very smooth lines and uh, get the clear depletion of, of a soft part with a higher pit head in a hard part. Okay, maybe I can give you one minute to run it, just uh, run this block. If you have already finished run, generate this plot, Press yes. If you haven't, just press no. If you have already generated this plus, maybe you can press yes. Okay, I see some, yes. Okay, I only have five minutes, maybe I can catch up. Okay, then um, the last part, I will show you how to run the four process, I mean, three global plus I matter plus music, but I don't think you can finish this running uh, in this hand handles, how you handle section, because it takes maybe 10 minutes. And uh, just, uh, for the exercise, we set to low energies. For example, we change the parameters in the MC global dot input only to uh, 50 GV. We only run PP for PP for 50 GV. And also we change, we use the smaller gradient in the hydro part to save the computer time. We only reset the gradient to smaller value. This is only for the illustration. For your simulation, I, I suggest you to test whether this smaller gradient will affect the result or not. Just to change the eta the grid size in eta to 32 and uh, the grid size in X and in Y change to 46. But even though it takes roughly 10 minutes to run the code, since it's a full three plus one dihedral, so it's much slower compared to a two plus one. And also maybe you can change the parameters in, the, in this uh, XML file. Maybe we change to seven, PD had mean to seven and PD max to negative one. Negative one means we do not have the upper limit of the PD had max, max and the change the energy into the 50 GV. And then everything is set, everything is ready. You can run the 3D global plus I matter plus music plus ISS 
just to run this executable file. This already includes everything that's run it. But it takes a long time since it's the full three plus one D. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't think we can finish it running during the section, so I will show you some results with my with, with the previous generated result. After running this, you can see some output files in the build folder. So, for example, you can see the average phase diagram trajectories in the different etap ranges, and also the intricacies at at the function at the different tall and also mean PT estimators. And mean and and uh, momentum and such a piece at a different rapidities. These are the music output, which contains the bug medium evolution information. And also there is a file named surface.data is the hyper phase out hyper surface. And also um, I will show you later how to use the, the notebook to get some intuitions of the hydro evolution. And also there is some there is a binary file named particle underscore sample dot beam, which is a binary form file, and it contains the hydrum from the ISCS sample on the hydro hyper surface. And also there is a pattern file named test output final state pattern, which it con contains the hard pattern output, output from the I matter, and also the hydrum files named test out, test out, Final state hydrons contains the final state hydrons. It includes the soft hydrons from ISS and the hard hydrons from I matter. For example, this is an example of the output of the test out test output final state hydrons. Uh, this line, for example, this line even one weight, this line contains the information of this event. Uh, first is the event ID and the weight means that the relative weight of this event and also the number of hydrons of these files. For example, this is 329 hydrons and the sigma gun is a cross section of this event. And the following is the information of the particle list. Uh, we have the, the second column is the PID and the third column is the status. And uh, certain element means that the hydrons are from the soft, from the head dynamics, and the other numbers means it's from the I matter hard part. And also following is the energy PX, PY, and PZ. You can calculate some observables based on the form momentum output in these files. And if you want, uh, there are some short script in the script folder that contains two files named uh, main get hard hydrons and the main gate soft hydrons. And you can, this is a very simple C++ version code. You can compare them very simply and move the, and generate two executable files and move this two executable file into the build folder and just directly run them in a terminal. And it will output two files named soft, hard, soft hydron yield and hard hydron yields. It contains the PD spectral DY or hydrons. For example, this is the output of the soft hydrogen yields. This is the PT and the PD spectral or pi zero, pi charge, kion, proton, lambda, and the lambda with different with CMS card or with Alice card, and also the eta and the DNT eta and the energy, energy distribution and the function eta and transfer of energy. And also this is an example of the hard hydrons. It also includes the PD spectral and or pi zero, pi plus, and also lambda cascade, and also the charge, the e DNT tab, and so on. And if you have many events, you can, if you want to get a high pitch result smooth, you can combine them with the relative weight they have. For example, if you want to get the PD the J spectral of high pitch regions, you can you can set the PD had minimum one, PD had minimum, and uh, set the PD had maximum to negative one means that there is no upper limit of the PD had max, and then combine them with real relative weight. It's an effective way to very it's an efficient way to get to the high PT result smooth, and then combine them and get the final result of the uh, spectral or just spectral of 
or hydrogen spectrum. For example, you can combine them. Uh, you can calculate, reproduce this result with the parameter file I show in the higher section. Uh, use I meta global music. You can use this parameter file and uh, combine them with this method to calculate the spectral or pion from zero to 20 GB in PP and or even PP collisions. And also you can reproduce the just spectral in PP collisions. And then last part, I will show you some hydro evolutions. You, okay. Um, then we go to the next block of the hydro uh, network. This block will use the pre-generated hydro result and give you some iterations of the temperature evolution and the spatial and the momentum and such of evolutions. For example, you can run this block to output uh, the temperature evolution at a function of time in central cold cold collisions at 200 GV and 20 GV. Here, the red line is the, for 200 GV and the blue line is 20 GV. We see that at high energies, the temperature reaches the peak value earlier than the low energies. This is because at higher energies, the, all the strings were deposited into hydro faster compared to the low energies, so it reaches the maximum value faster compared to the low energies and then to decrease monotonically. And also following, you can see the uh, special energy you know, evolutions at a function of time. For example, this is a special energy Spatial and energy evolution at these two energies. The red line is 200 GV and the blue line is 20 GV. This is a dynamical initialization process. So the early stages is very complicated. And the later stages is a de decrease and increase. This is because here for this event, the in plane and the out plane is changed. So the magnitude of epsilon T will decrease first and then increase again. And also you can see the momentum and such evolutions at these two energies. And the uh, slow first is increase and then slowly decrease. And also, um, also you can get some, get some intuitions based on the um, escape code running. For example, this is a final charge transfer momentum distributions of the soft, soft, hard, soft part alone with the different uh, PT hat in the PTCR. But the black line it shows the result without subtraction. You can see that from the top to bottom curves, the PT hat increase and uh, the multiplicity in the soft hat in the soft part decrease, which means that the the larger PT hat in the soft in the hard part will cause the smaller multiplicity in the soft part. Yet I hope this plot can give you some intuitions of the soft hard collisions based on the global momentum, energy momentum conservations. And also this is the PD spectral of charged hydrons in PV collisions from zero to 20 GV. And uh, the red line is the total uh, spectral and the blue line is for the soft part only and the green line for soft hard part only. You can see that the low PT soft part describes the data well and it decreases exponentially and the high PT regions, the hard part describes data well and it decreases based on the power law. But you can see that at the intermediate PT regions, there is still some tensions to describe the data. So in, the, so in other words, this, plan, this data is not perfect yet. So if you, if you want, you can find a method to improve that. And then I think it will be your it will be nice work and maybe it can be your first escape project. And also this is the jet spectral in PV collisions at a different critical radius. And again, you can reproduce this result and this result based on the parameter file in the, in the hydro uh, with the escape code. Okay, that's all for this hydro section. Thank you. Do you have any questions? There's one question is, what the equation state was used and how do we justify using it for low energy collisions and small systems? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, here, um, here the equation state is for, is, I think it's developed by you. <laughs> the equation, 
the equation is the uh, the crossover type. I mean, the the low chemical potential regions come from the lattice, and then do the uh, Taylor expansion uh, in the chemical potential region in the chemical potential directions. So in a short, it's the crossover based uh, equational state, and uh, you can. If you do not, it, it haven't include the first order phase transition or quick end point. And it, I think it can give you some baseline calculation to low energies. And, uh, and also, it, I think it works, it should, it should also work for small systems. Small yes. system, the system is out of equilibrium, it just has more out of equilibrium correction from shear and bulk viscous pressure tensor in this hydrodynamic language. Yeah. So there's another question is, why doesn't it clearly explain the at least PP data? At least this one? Maybe Arch, Arch, Archtar, you can ask the question yourself. Hi. Um, so I uh, I think this plot or the plot above where you were showing like the soft PT part in Alice data. Not Atlas, but Alice. Okay, maybe I mean this one. I, I think yes, yeah. So you just said like, uh, yeah, it doesn't clearly explain here. So that was, I was like wondering why is that? Why or maybe that? I just misheard. So you said like the escape here, it uh, doesn't uh, explain Alice data or oh. or maybe I, I misunderstood. Yeah, I, I, maybe I refer to this part. For this part it shows the uh, pi plus plus uh, pi charge spectra from zero to 20 TV uh, in minimum bias PV collision at five TV. And the cross is from the Alice measurement, which is Alice data. And the lines are our x cap code calculations. As, and uh, the, the blue line is for the soft part, and the green line is for the hard part, and the red line is the soft plus hard part. You can see that at a low PT regions, the soft, the our high dynamics works well in describing the Alice pion charge spectra. And at high PT regions, the hard part, the all hard part described the Alice data well, but at the intermediate PT regions, for example, between two to four GV, the red line is our model calculations. We still underestimate the Alice data. So in other words, our model is not, um, our model is not ready to describe the all PT regions in PV, in PV collisions, or maybe the parameter is not so good, or, or maybe we miss some other mechanism, such as the quark collisions, contributions. So it, it's for the future study. If you want, you can. If you can fix this problem, then it will be your. It will be nice work, and it will be your first project, a first escape project. Okay, and just a follow up question. So. Uh... I mean, uh, it explains the high PD part and the low PD part, but not the intermediate. That's what was the your point, right? Right, right. But right. yeah, so uh, was this the issue in Jetscape? I mean, this is the problem right now in X Xscape. So did it all oh. also exist in Jetscape? I think so. In the public Jetscape result, they only show the high PT regions. So this is the first time in the Jetscape or in the Xscape, we go to the low PT regions. So in a short, I do I also think JSCAP code has the same issue in the intermediate PT region. Oh, you asking Abjit, this hand. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I, I just want to clarify. So in JetScape, there's also a low PT, right? That's uh, but the all PT is always been hard for a long time uh specifically the region 
from two to four GEV that he's showing you. Um, that has been a difficult region from back in the Rick days. So one solution to that is to use modified hadronization, right? Not Cooper Fry, not the kind of string breaking hadronization that happens in jets, but to use something like recombination. And I think that's going to be covered, uh, I believe, next week. Uh, so that's a new thing. Um, and you that in in many calculations that has, you know, in maybe not in full scale simulations, but in many calculations that has shown that that can fill that little gap between two and four GeV. Okay. Oh, the code is still running, <laughs> so it takes a longer time. So we, I don't want to wait, it finished. So there's one more question is, does Xscape combine particle spectra in output from all events, which are set in hydro input? I, I don't understand the question. Does Xscape combine particle spectra in the output from all events that you ran? Yeah. Uh, do you mean output spectra or the all event? Actually, there are some script to calculate the spectra. If you want, yeah, two shell script in the Hydro hands on section inside the script folder. It will output the spectral of hard and soft, soft and hard part event by event. And you can combine them, use your own script, and calculate some, some, some observables. Yeah, the XQ is... code only output the full momentum of all the particle list. Yeah, I think the the question is, you know, in an event, if you look at the output event by event, if you just look at the raw output, right? In if you're not from Jetscape, if you just look at it, then it's hard to say which part came from the hard part and which part came from the soft part. But you know, th there's a trick, right? Uh, that, that we know that you know we list the hard hadrons first. Uh, and then there are some photons and then it turns into the soft hadrons. So that's why we always recommend that you use a script, right? Which automatically separates if you want. If you don't want, you can just combine them. That's fine. If, if you don't care where the hadrons came from, if they came from the bulk, if they came from uh, fragmentation of a jet, you can just take everything together. But if you want to separate the, the scripts that he just showed you, will tell you that okay these hadrons actually came from fragmentation of a hard jet and these hadrons came from the bulk yeah and also does that, does that based, i mean just one more comment based on the output your status status 11 means the hadron from the soft part to the other numbers means it's from the hard part so you can separate a soft and hard part Okay, any other questions? People, if you want to just speak directly, you can unmute your mic. Okay, if not, you can still post questions on the Slack channel. We will actually answer them uh, off time. And um, I think that's all we have for today. Mike, do you have any other things to mention? No. Thank you very much, Wenman, for a comprehensive presentation and also having all of the notes ready for everyone so that they can follow it um, you know, independently. Thanks. Okay, thank you.